Hi, everybody. Welcome to election night coverage here on DC TV, channel 15, live uh, on Com the Comcast system. You're watching the live coverage of the November 4th, 2014 election. It's going to be a lot of fun. We hope uh, it's informative. We hope you join us by calling in and uh, talking to all the guests that we have tonight. It's going to be a great time. Now, this program is also uh, simulcast on uh, KDIRT 95.7 FM here in Davis. My name is Richard Harris. I used to be on the school board years ago, and my gorgeous, beautiful, wonky, brilliant co-host, Anna Ferreira, uh, lobbyist extraordinaire and education expert, is with us tonight, too. So we're really going to have a lot of fun talking to uh, the school board candidates and a few other people uh, who come on. We want to give a shout out to our partners, um, City Government Channel 16, the Davis Community Network, OMSOFT Technologies, Yolo County Elections Office, and also, of course, um, thanks to all the great crew here that do this just for fun at DCTV. Um, the director switcher is Diane Dadashka, uh, the coach who's back uh, behind the, uh, the wall here. The floor managers, Una Cho and Tyler Schaffo. The cameras, Bill Lorfein, Peter Peterson, and Emily Merton. Uh, audio, Peter Baum, uh, lighting, Jeff Shaw, the results, Alex Silva Saturn is uh, putting a lot of this together for us. We'll have that on the computer later. That should be pretty neat. And the executive producer that kind of keeps it all running is uh, Autumn uh, Lab, Ren Lab Renault. Renault. I know, I love, just messed it up just to mess with her. Listen, the number to call tonight is 757-2419. And DMA's Twitter feed is at... DMA feed, makes sense, and on Facebook, uh, uh, check us out at Davis Media Access. Um, like I said, it's going to be informative, but we're also going to have fun, and we're going to be here for a while, so uh, please join us by phone. I want to turn it over to Anna, who's going to introduce our first guest. Well, we're really pleased to have you here with us. You know, don't worry, first first person is uh, is not the guinea pig in this, in this situation. <laughs> It'll be easy for um, <laughs> so we're pleased to have Chuck Reardon with us, Reardon here with us today, and um, he is one of um, the wonderful people who have put forward their names uh, for your consideration for school board um, at this uh, November fourth, twenty fourteen election. So Chuck, yes, we're you know, does it feel good? It's all over with. It feels great, no matter uh, how it's going to turn out. Um, I think all the candidates would agree, especially the, the last three months have just been really intense. Uh, I think you've seen several candidates that have just given it, uh, you know, 110%. You all did. You all uh, did that. It was great. Yeah, and, and there are that. some that really uh, shined, I would say. But yeah, I mean, no matter how you approach it, it is a very intense three months. So. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that everyone is much relieved. And we kept it clean and all of that. Yes. I, I feel like you were unique. Each, each candidate has some unique qualities, but mm -hmm. you know, I thought that your story about being um, the first person in your extended family to, be, to finish college was mm -hmm. you know, very interesting. I have a similar background, and I just think that's, you know, you're, a, you're kind of a pioneer out there, and you know, you know that, that resonated with me. Tell us more about, um, about your perspective and what that brings uh, to you as a candidate. Um, well, I think you know, just having to you know, kind of come to that realization at a, at a young age that you know, if I really want to change my situation, I had a, a wonderful upbringing, loving parents, uh, nothing um, you know, wrong in that regard. It, it, was, uh, you know, it was a great situation, but it was just something that that I, for myself, realized that I wanted something more, and I wanted to have uh, a lot of different options available to me as I, as I uh, came of age and, and started looking towards a career. So, you know, certainly public education, uh, regardless of what situation you're born into, is kind of to me like the great leveler. If you really want to apply yourself and you want to give it your all, uh, I think it's it's fair to say the the, the sky's the limit. So I think it's just a wonderful avenue uh, for those that, that want to uh, better themselves and, and build a better future. 
you get a fair shake with the voters? Did you feel like you had an opportunity to interact with people, people listen to you, and then you feel like you had, you know, a fair shake, you know? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I good. think uh, in talking to people, you uh, there's a lot of ideas and, and issues out there that really resonate. And then also you learn a lot of things that you either hadn't thought of or you just think about from a different angle, that they see it from a, you know, just a slightly different perspective. And it, yeah. you know, by talking to all those different folks, it really better informs the whole picture. One thing I feel like I learned you know, um, in the years that I've been here is, you know, with my kids and, and school board and all of that is um, you know, it really is a team kind of process that you're working under, um, you kind of have to come to consensus and, and all of that. Um, but I think the expectation is that you're, you're also going to do your homework and, and, uh, and have your own opinions as well. So do you see those things as, as adversarial or do you, do you, if you were on school board, you know, what were the, what were the issues that you would bring as your own? Well, I think to address the first part of your question, I mean, I think everyone comes at it with their own um, certain interests and things that they would like to emphasize. And, and I think the, you know, the, the good part about a, a healthy debate is that you really give every question or issue or challenge before the district, you know, it's full hearing, you know, and, and, and so you need to air these, these questions completely uh, everyone needs to, to provide their input, and then I, th I think ideally what, what happens is that the, uh, the board has at least a unified direction forward. There may be different you know, opinions uh, and where things are going to fall one way or another, but at least there's a, a, a cohesive direction forward and, and that everyone feels that they got their say. Um, for me, I, I think um, certainly um, with Common Core coming on, Online, mm -hmm. it's you know this. It's still got a lot of road testing to do, a lot of controversy, you know, just endless questions. People are just not comfortable with it yet. So I think, in terms of uh, even at the national level, how it's rolled out, uh, I don't think people really got the warm and fuzzy. And so we're even dealing with that locally. That what is this really about? And I think for me, I see it as the, the inherent flexibility of that approach. That, that it provides tremendous opportunity for what I think of as uh, inquiry-based learning. Mm -hmm. And that's more of a it's, a, it's a back and forth between the teacher and the students. And you know the teacher kind of gets the, the conversation going, but then the, the students, it kind of fuels and, and it, it builds upon itself. And then the, the questions are coming from the students. And so the, the teacher becomes more of a facilitator. And you know obviously there's some that's, that's still wrote and you know basic literacy that you have to address, but I think in terms of higher order thinking and, and more collaborative yeah. uh, you know, style learning and creative problem solving, I think that's really a good vehicle for that. Do you agree that it was you know, kind of teaching to the test at, for a while there, and at this point something else might be a welcome kind of uh, situation? I mean, it feels like you know, from what you're saying, and I've heard that too, that, you know, that it, it might be a welcome change um, for all of us. Um, are there particular things you like about Common Core? Um, well, I, I, I think the one aspect that I, I like in particular is that it's not just what are the kind of mechanistic steps for getting to a answer. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, there are multiple answers. And in other cases, there is a single answer. Um, but for those where it's a little more wide open, you know, there's more emphasis on the process. For, you know, and it takes into account different learning styles, uh, just even uh, you know, different factors weighing in differently. So it, it's really. Again, it's not really a, a formulaic or static approach. It's something that, that is much more participatory, I guess you could say, and, and, and it's emphasis on how you get to the answer. You know, that's, you know, and I think ultimately yeah. what needs to happen is you find balance. Because right now, if you go too far that direction, it's, well, you know, things be, start feeling a little bit untethered. Right. Uh, but I, I think that's a, it's a welcome change to see that aspect uh, starting to feed into the, the curriculum. So let's uh, let's talk uh, the election and all of that and the process. People like to know, you know, what the candidates have been through all that. What was the most fun you had 
during during all this? There must have been that one moment, the aha or something, you know. Farmer's market, door to door, what was it? Yeah, and I, I think sometimes just even the, the chuckles, you know, if you're just standing around with uh, fellow candidates before you go into a, some forum and uh, just kind of sharing little tidbits, not exactly war stories, but you know, you just have some, you, you kind of let down and, 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 and have a few chuckles along the way. And then also, yeah, at the farmer's market, uh, you know, this is Davis, and, and you meet some really interesting <laughs> characters. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, it just kind of, it just kind of fills out the whole experience. So if nothing what else... What was the you, biggest surprise, maybe? Uh, I would say the amount of effort. And it's one of those things going in, you know, it's going to be huge. Uh, my particular work situation... Um, you know, I, I had concerns about that going in. I mean, basically, my work day is 13 hours door to door. Yeah. Uh, so I knew that, and then also I, I work in downtown San Francisco. So I have some serious yeah. practical and logistical constraints, and I knew that going in, but it really became obvious, you know, early on in the the, the campaign season that uh, that that it was a huge challenge and and presented some some pretty clear disadvantages. I mean, again. Uh, you know, I, I was, my, uh, my reasons for joining the race, I mean, it was, I, I had a driving interest and passion to be part of this. I think the, the district's at a very important crossroads, and I, I feel like I could uh, bring something to the table. Well, and it certainly uh, seems like you've managed to, to spend a lot of time volunteering in addition to your yeah. Work. Yeah, and that yeah, was you were part uh, of the um, part of the strategic planning process, yes, right? Yes, and I think that was really wow. kind of a, a little bit of icing in terms of of uh, deciding whether or not this was something I wanted to pursue because it was it was an incredible experience. Um, you know, you had these people from different walks of life, and you had you know people within the school district, you had members of the community, and it was amazing. It was truly amazing how. You know, again, you can see there are clear differences of opinion, but there was a everyone came there deciding that they were going to work together. It was a choice, and it was it was actually beautiful to see it unfold, and and the outcome. I mean, I think some really good uh, paths ahead with the strategic plan were identified, and it, I mean, it really is there. A lot of it is somewhat abstract and far-reaching, but as you go, you can add tangible. Um, Goals and objectives yeah. that, that, that yeah. it just kind of provides a roadmap, and it was, it was a wonderful experience. So that certainly played into my decision. And, uh, and then it got you onto that other road, which was being a candidate. We've got just a little bit of time left. I okay. want you to give us the, the, the what's the, the last thing we should know about you, and maybe what's your future, your job situation going to change a little bit, so that in two years you might be able to give it another run with a more time. I, I mean, that's maybe a little too personal, but maybe yeah. it. Will you think about running again? Um, I in think twenty seconds or less. <laughs> I think actually my well, work situation is, is looking to get uh, potentially more uh, intense uh, because the workload is looking to increase. Um, so I, I think from a practical standpoint, it's it's not likely. It, it, I think that again that was one of the really key issues that came home to me personally in this campaign as much as I wanted to pursue this. It was it was a challenge. Yeah, yeah. And Timing I didn't mean to say that in a way like you weren't going to win. I'm going to ask every person <laughs> well, I that exact my, thing tonight. Yeah, you know, I managed my you, expectations. If yes. you don't make it, you know, are we going to see you again? So then I think that um, was a fair answer on your part. And timing is everything. I admire yes. anyone who wants to get into public service right now. It's a, it's a tough time. We have a lot of issues ahead, but yeah. we really appreciate your um, willingness to do that. Well, yeah. thank you very much. And thanks for joining us. All thank right. you. It's okay. a pleasure. All right. Well, this has been fun so far, huh? Pretty good. Oh, uh, yeah. So later on, we're going to be looking at some of the other statewide races that um, are going on. And we're also going to talk with, um, with assembly member candidates, right? right? They're going to be calling in. So stay tuned. Um, at this point, right. I know... Um, We've got other people that are, are going to come in as the night goes, too. Yep. Now, we've got websites we're going to go to, which will also show us yes. some of the races. So if somebody out there has a race statewide that they want, um, you know, they want information about, maybe you know somebody is running or know something about a race down the, down the state, call us. And uh, if you're not by your computer and we can pull it up on the 
famous DC TV computers, the DMA computers. Right, it's hard at this that. early hour um, to get anything of usefulness, I guess, because the because they're still calculating those numbers. So probably later later on in the yeah in the show later. we'll be sharing what we know. Well, let's welcome our next guest, Mr. Grada. Nice to see you. How are you doing? Oh, just fine. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, election night, uh, uh, and uh, the election is now officially over. So everybody gets to come in here and breathe a little sigh of relief and uh, maybe just relax a bit here on our couch and talk yes, to us. Yes, well, share with us a little yeah, bit. Use that pillow if you want. There you go. We, uh, we appreciate your stopping by. Jose Granda, obviously, uh, for the folks at home, uh, one of the candidates of, uh, who ran uh, this time. Well, did you, um, you know, what was the experience like? Did you get your message out there? Was it, uh, you know, everything you thought it was going to be going into it? You've run before. Um, how did it compare? I know I'm kind of throwing it all out to you, but just, you know, the election's over now. So <laughs> what do well, you really think? <laughs> I think that, you know, for me, it has been a natural set of events because I live in Davis 36 years. So going to the farmer's market, Talking to people there uh, was nothing new for me. I know a lot of folks in town, and uh, it was a great experience in that regard. So I, I think it was uh, a bit taxing on the time because you had to get up really early. If you don't get there yeah. by 7, I think you Very will get true. to the last <laughs> stall the last in there. The <laughs> yes, yes. So I was, I think I was able to get the message across, as you know, I. Um, I knew that going into the race, I, I will have a, an uphill battle because we have a, six candidates and m me that is different than the others. I think I, I have I taken a stance. Why do you think you're different? Because I have taken a stance on several issues that uh, that don't uh, uh, don't are not similar to their candidates. And the main one is the parcel taxes. That has been a battle that I believe um, the time has come to reflect on that. It's not that I'm opposed to taxes, but the idea is that paying 30, I think 34 years of taxes, when the school district tells the voters that this is a temporary tax and then they keep extending it, then um, that that is, I don't feel that it's treating the voters uh, and the taxpayers very well, especially when the money is not uh, causing an effect on the for everybody. It may cause for uh, some special groups and, but very little impact. We have a budget that is over seventy-six million dollars, but out of those seventy of those are um, comes from our income tax, federal sources and so on. So I I think, um, I mean, people reflect on this. I think and there's another issue that I've been thinking as, as, as the day closed today, and that was that when you make a decision about these taxes, you're only taxing people who live in homes, uh, while the decision is being made by people who don't live in homes. And I think there is some issue of unfairness there. Because if the ones who decide were the homeowners, then it really doesn't matter which way they decide. That's their money, you know. But you have homeowners paying taxes that other people decide for them. And that was a message that I wanted to get across. So that's one issue. I think I, am, I also had a bit of a, a, in the campaign, there were a couple of controversies, mainly the issue of the conflict of interest that I brought up about Madhavi Sander and our Barbara Asher, both of them, um, because uh, I believe that a trustee should not come into the school board to put their own personal agenda, no matter what it is. And we had the Nancy Peterson case, and uh, Madhavi Sander wrote an article on the Vanguard about homosexuality in the schools and this needs to be celebrated and all the stuff. So I took issue with that and I wrote that against that, that that was another conflict of interest and of course caused a big uproar. Well, but I, I think it's a good discussion. I think that you're correct. It's a good discussion. Um, I 
I remember seeing something about diversity and yes. and wanting to be accepting of all types yeah. of students. Um, you know, and I, I do think that it's you know it's just it's been some interesting perspective that you're bringing to the table. I think it's um, the parcel tax issue is another one. I agree. Have you um, have you reached out to? Um, you know, what, what groups do you think you reached out to more? That's an excellent um, question, because if I, if I were to, to win this race, uh, which I hope I do, it would be because of the Hispanic vote. You know, I'm the only one out of the seven candidates that can communicate with 18% of the parents and, and the kids in the district. Okay, and I really have a genuine interest in seeing them successful. I've been doing STEM careers for all my life. I am a professor in the mechanical engineering department at CSUS, and my whole career has been to bring these Hispanic students, the underrepresented, into the engineering and math and science. So that's one group. The other group is the, you know, I am sensitive to the disabled because of my daughter Sarah, who is very well known in the community, and I think that I would champion that cause for them. Uh, also, the group for languages. I speak four languages. I speak German, French, English, and Spanish. I believe that this should be an integral part of education. So when you think about uh, math, science, and uh, you know STEM, and languages, and special kids, those are my constituents. I, during the campaign, I was asked a question whether I will cater to special interest groups. Six candidates answered no, and I answered yes. Because I said my special interest groups are the taxpayers, uh, the students, and the teachers, basically. Because those are the ones who, who are in the trenches, like me, every day in the classroom, making a difference for our kids. So when you talk about, um, I know you had the three T's with the teacher, yeah, yeah. And, uh, mm. and technology was one. Yeah. Are you talking about STEM when you're talking about that? That's or are you right. Not because talking about actual technology bringing into the classroom. I was talking about both of those because uh, what I do is I teach STEM, but I do it with technology. I use, for example, right now I am in the process of replacing the blackboard by the screen, by the computer. And so I have a system where from an iPad I could control another computer, and each student is looking at the same, uh, same screen while they also have the big screen. So I could write on my iPad and, and explain if somebody has a question and everybody is seeing what I'm explaining to that student. So I don't, I, the explanation that I would take the time to talk to a student is benefiting everybody and the only way to do it is with this technology. So I, that was the one T, the taxpayers, obviously we talked about that right. and teaching is because that's my passion in life. And um, you know, I, the, the word that you mentioned about diversity is, you know, uh, being a Hispanic person, I feel strongly about that, that we need to have a representative on the board. And diversity means everybody. And when I got into the controversy about the homosexual issue, I wanted to say that I respect and I agree that nobody, for any reason, should be bullied or being disrespectful. But that includes also kids that have religious beliefs and everybody should be treated equally. And that was the point. So as we, uh, we have to wrap up here in, yeah. in about a minute or so and, and you know the time constraints we have. So if you don't win, will you run again? This question I'm gonna ask everybody. If you don't win, do you see yourself running again? And what do you see your role being in the next parcel tax election, which uh, it's presumed that since it is a major part of the funding for the district, that there will be a push to go back to the voters and once again ask them to, in, you know, to reaffirm their support I, for parcel tax. Okay. Do you have a? Do you have? And we don't I think, have much time, but yeah, yeah, fair question. I think that is a very fair question. I think uh, regarding the first question. I would have to think about this issue uh, when the time comes, so I cannot give you an answer whether I will run again. That's right. Regarding the parcel tax, uh, and if I were to be elected, obviously I would not be the chair of the committee that opposed the taxes. I mean, that's obviously a conflict of interest that I would Or board to support, or board, probably. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so one of the two. And the other thing is that um, when, um, 
when it comes to the parcel taxes, if I don't win, most certainly I will be involved in the campaign to oppose the tax. Based on what I told you, I think we need to reflect and look for another avenue rather than treating only the homeowners the uh, foot in the bill, not everybody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it would be taxing everybody, then I let it be. But this is only for those people who, who own homes. So that's a But everybody sends their kids to school whether you own a home or not, though. But questions that's for true. another day, and maybe next that's time right. we can discuss. Right. Well, I hope so, you had some fun while you were campaigning as well. Oh, it was. I think there's very good people. I'm very thankful to the support in the community. And uh, of course, uh, once in a while, you get into a debate, a heated debate with somebody who doesn't <laughs> agree goes. with you. But that, <laughs> All right, well, thank you for much. joining thank us. You thank you very much. And good luck to you. All thank right. You. We're going to now look at uh, mm. some absentee, um, absentee um, votes, right? Because I think maybe the next thing, and we can call that up on your little computer maybe, or maybe they can put it on the screen. Well, let's look you guys and see. have any uh, absentee votes that we could uh, bring up? It's after 8 o'clock. Let's see how we're doing. Here we go. This is our first uh, update. And, We're going to try um, and see how this works. See if, can you see it on there? I'll read it off the screen. Looks like uh, Madhavi Sunder is in first place with 25.4%. Uh, uh, what, am I having trouble with my microphone? Can you read the rest of them there, Anna? Um, yes. Barbara Archer uh, is second with 44. No, 20.7%. And Tom Adams was 17.6%. What is that? I think 44? on the other side it says ballot percentage. Right. Anybody know? Somebody call us from the elections department <laughs> and let us know what in the heck that what they're talking about there. And then I think that's the amount of that's the number of ballots that they're actually on. Vote percentage, right. And third is Tom. Adams. So, um, so far that's what we've got. Fourth is Bob Poppengay. Uh, right. And then Mr. Granda, Mr. Nolan, and Mr. Reardon is the way I read it there. So, um, but, you know, we and need glasses. I, so. you, I, I've got glasses. It's not helping. You can but, probably uh, see it on your screen. Every, everybody at home can see that a lot better than you and I. Oh, <laughs> they caught us glasses with our glasses. <laughs> well, this, we're having a lot of fun here tonight. We want to thank everybody for joining us. And uh, we also want to thank uh, our new guest who uh, has just arrived. And it looks like she's probably pretty happy because it looks like she's in first place. Anna? Well, thank you for joining us. And now, you know, we've been talking with uh, the, uh, the wonderful candidates for school board. It's nice to be able to breathe. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, it's over. And, you know, we were talking with them about their different, their unique perspectives that they bring. Um, it seemed like everybody had something different that they were coming to the table with. Um, many of them were volunteer, um, you know, had strong, strong volunteer experience. Mm -hmm. One of the things I see, um, you know, of course, you started out leading that charge on Korematsu Elementary, which, you know, got so much, um, you know, wonderful, warm, you know, support. But beyond that, you know, you started right away with that, with that campaign. Um, was that the point where you decided I want to be involved with the school district and continue this this sort of um, work within the schools at Davis. And what did you learn from that that made you want to do that? Sure. The wait, the one thing that's different of Mata V. Sunder is that she's brought a guest that she should. Ah, oh, I am so sorry. Yes. Yes. My yes. Guest. <laughs> Welcome, guest, and your guest is. This is my husband, Anupam Chander, the partner with whom we can't do anything. You yes. know, so you thank made a you. good partner. Thank you for coming as well. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, us. no, you're absolutely right. Go on. Oh, well, yeah, I had uh, the privilege nine years ago to first get involved with our Davis schools uh, in a hands-on way. The then school board uh, members uh, with Marty West and Joan Salee, Kelty Jones, Jim Provenza, B.J. Klein, they uh, put together a committee to uh, name the newest elementary school here in Davis. And so I got named to that committee. I only had a two-year-old, and I was pregnant with my son, with my second son. Oh. So, so with my son, so um, very it, admirable. 
example. It was an <laughs> early start on really learning about our schools and the school right. board. And um, that year, Fred Korematsu, the civil rights hero who challenged the Japanese internment, he died. And that's the one rule. So Richard will remember this, right? In terms of the naming of our schools in Davis, uh, you have to name it after somebody who's deceased. Mm -hmm. And so I proposed the name Fred Korematsu, and it was an incredible experience. It was my first campaign uh, because I really met communities across Davis, the Sikh community, the Muslim community, the Japanese American community, the civil rights groups, um, all of whom came together to uh, tell the story about Japanese Americans in Davis. Mm -hmm. And what we saw in Fred Korematsu's story, an amazing teachable moment for kids. He was an ordinary person. Many think of him as the Rosa Parks of the Asian American community. And uh, he was an ordinary person who just said, this is wrong. And he had the courage to speak up. And today, uh, Korematsu Elementary is a social justice school. There's 500 plus kids there. And their school song is, what can one little person do? What can one little me or you do? And it's just been great. So, and I, and I, you know, I'm a professor of law. I travel around the country speaking about access to knowledge and uh, intellectual property and the promotion of learning. But I always tell friends and colleagues that one of the most meaningful things that I've ever had the privilege to be involved in was the naming of that school. And, um, and so that was kind of when my interest in the school board right began to grow. But honestly, it goes way back. I was the student representative to my school board when I was in high school. I knew it. <laughs> I was. I, I was. Uh, I have a list of all those that were on when I was on the school board. OK, yeah, I'm yeah. following that. So this yeah. isn't really anything new at all. In fact, right. all my today and over the campaign, I've been getting emails and Facebook messages and donations from kids who grew up with me from elementary school, high school, college, law school, and people who I've worked with on faculties across the country because they see this as part of all of the work I've been doing on access to knowledge. I think that's, you know, being a student representative probably gives you a leg up on, you know, learning a little bit more about school board. I'm not sure people really know what they're getting into when they when they jump in. Just the, the reality that, you know, you are um, part of a board that mm -hmm. makes decisions together. Yes. And so I think that that's something that um, is, is important to learn sooner, I guess, rather than later. But I, that's wonderful that you participate in that way. Um, I also, you know, I know that you work for your uh, law professor at UC Davis. Mm -hmm. Why do you think, or do you think, that, um, that we've had good relationships with the university in terms of sharing information to the benefit of our students. I know that one of the things you've been saying is, you know, let's have more of a partnership sure. there. How do you propose that that happen? And do you think it's been a good one up until now? Oh, I think that we definitely have a good relationship. And I think, though, that there's more that we can do to strengthen that relationship, to be partners, to talk about STEM education, for mm -hmm. example. And yeah. we have faculty at UC Davis who are developing STEM programs for high schools in the state, but not necessarily talking to our own district. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we have, and that that would go with a, a variety of um, programs too. We could talk about laboratory opportunities. We could talk about foreign language opportunities, and. Um, one of the things that I think is most important is we need to bring that adult to child ratio down mm -hmm. in our schools. We need more adults. And well, we have all these college students at UC Davis. Uh, they're already mentoring in homework after school homework programs like the Bridge Program and at the Academic Center at the high school. So I, I really want to see how we can strengthen these relationships uh, with, with the campus even further. And as you know, one of the things we found out years ago was the university views itself as a regional. Uh, mm -hmm. Entity and it's not just the Davis University sure. and so they have to spread their uh, oh, their yes. net wider and you know they of course they worked in the charter school and started the charter school in West Sacramento as part of what they do so yes but there should be a strong relationship I, I certainly am I'm, I'm you're right on track with that the best uh, it is a heck of a resource that we need we're mm -hmm. running out of time this I is know not we're down long. to two this minutes is, <laughs> but I I also <laughs> wanted to you know. Um, you know, engage your your uh, spouse and guest. Um, was it was it fun? Was were there things about the campaign that were, you know, unexpected or uh, what were some of the highlights for you? So um, we've put together a video, um, and the 
and just seeing this, which is available on YouTube, uh, if you go to Sunder for School Board uh, on YouTube, you'll see this video. And it's full of really fun moments in the campaign. Uh, just uh, Madhavi and her, her team uh, made t-shirts very early on. And those t-shirts, you know, people wore them all over. They wore them to Disneyland. And so there's a picture of uh, two of our uh, uh, two children uh, with it, wearing those t-shirts uh, next to Mickey Mouse. That's uh, awesome. So it's, w there were lots of fun moments. You can put it in the grocery bags that I handed out years ago <laughs> with the t-shirts. <laughs> this is awful. They have, know, to, they have to leave now. And well, it's not, uh, and you're winning. And we could Just, talk all night. We're, we're going <laughs> to give you 20 seconds to say, Hey, because it looks like you're winning, so say something about that. Well, it's still, the night is young, and okay. uh, but we're encouraged, and we feel happy and optimistic. So mm -hmm. we hope for more good news as the night goes on. Good. Well and done, we Soundbite. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you care. both for coming Thank in. Thank you. Thank you. Right. This is, uh, Appreciate your time. This has been a lot of fun. and um, So far, so good. So far, so good, I think. We're in uh, had a few, I shouldn't uh, say that. I should not. A, a few school board candidates, yeah. and uh, now I think what we get to do is talk to uh, Charlie Shop, right? Who I think is on the line. He is yes, the yes. assembly candidate. So now we're moving to a state, the state level. Um, our representative, um, Charlie? candidate. Charlie. Charlie Shop, are you on the line? Yes. Can you hear me? No, I can't. But just <laughs> barely because the door is open, Charlie. But uh, we'll pretend. No, I, uh, maybe somebody can crank that up a little bit in here so we can hear Charlie in here, too. That'd be great. And so you know, Charlie Shop is the Republican running for the Assembly District uh, in the state legislature that um, includes Davis. Now maybe I can hear Charlie. Charlie, has it been a, um, was it everything you thought it was going to be running for the Assembly this, uh, this time? Oh, yeah, sure. And uh, it's a heavily Democratic district, but we tried to make a difference, and we'll see how the vote comes out. I'm actually in Clear Lake right now, taking down my campaign signs. We're grassroots. I just finished blue the county, so now I'm in Clear Lake. So you're in, you're in Clear Lake. It's good to know that somebody actually goes around and takes down some of those yeah. signs, especially if they're taking down ones that belong to them. So that's good. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. What... Um, how did it go when you were out there? That's a big assembly district up Lake County, as you say, Yolo County, Napa. Um, you know, what, what sort of reception did you get from the voters? And did you think that you had a, a fair opportunity to get your message across? Oh, sure. I had a fair opportunity to get the message across. The biggest thing is that we're, we're rebuilding the Republican Party across the state. And getting to work in this district i've got to work with the napa county the sonoma county solano company which has a fantastic central committee and we're rebuilding the yolo county republic party and we're rebuilding lake county too so it's all about the future yeah so do you uh you see the republican party making inroads and coming back in this district oh sure um the, Re the republican party has had a problem for the past decade but it's changing and we have some some solid Republicans that want to make it what it used to be, a party of ethics and honor and integrity, and that's what I'm going to continue to work for. All right. Now, you know, here in Davis tonight, we're speaking with a lot of uh, the school board candidates that are coming into the studio. Uh, you were on the school board in uh, Esparta, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, two, two terms. Two? I, I believe right when the, right just before the... Uh, the global war on terrorism started because I got called to Okinawa. I'm sorry, you got because you got called? Uh, Okinawa. As a military reserve officer, I got called to Okinawa, and then 9-11 happened, and I was on active duty for the next six years. Oh, wow. Well, we appreciate your service. We thank you for that, for sure. Um, was, the, um, uh, was that school board experience something that helped you in your run for the assembly, you think? Oh, most definitely. You know, it, it's all about leadership and getting things done. In the Esparta School Board, on the board, we actually got a bond passed with 75% of the vote in a rural conservative district. So it shows what can be done. Um, it's just a matter of getting that up to the state level now. So I don't know how the vote's going to come out tonight, but I do know I was the underdog. And we'll go forward, and I'll head to the convention, win or lose, come this next spring, and we'll start to work to make the Republican Party stronger. Well, I'm sure this will not be the last that we've heard of you. And again, we appreciate your service to our country and everything you've done along those lines. Absolutely. And um, we will let you go, Charlie. 
Um, right. You've got a lot of other folks to talk to, I'm sure. So thank you very much, and thank you for, uh, for calling in here to DCTV. Bye-bye. All right. What else? Uh, what should we do now? Let's talk to our next guest. I don't know. I think we should. Our next guest is Mr. Alan Fernandez, who uh, got himself appointed to the school board and then uh, weaseled his way into a, a, a seat <laughs> and, and no then one doesn't have to run, to run again. Against I know. You. I mean, this guy's a power, huh? I don't <laughs> know what to make. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. Well, th thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming by. We appreciate My it. My pleasure. My pleasure. You were in a bit of a, uh, of a unique situation there, huh, with the appointments and then running for that the two-year seat and no yeah. one else ran. But you still participated, right? Still got out yeah, there and I, talked I, to people and... Mixed it up, went to the forums and all that, right? I thought it was important. I yeah. mean, you know, you know better than most uh, the job of being a school board member and a good one at that. And, um, you know, certainly uh, I applied for the appointment, as did many, and was fortunate enough to, to be appointed and, and serve uh, for a period of time and then decided to run for uh, the remainder of that position, mostly because I felt it was... Uh, really what, one, the law provides uh, when you look at the law, and two, it was a matter of uh, openness and transparency to the public that there's a vacancy, it's appointed, and, and, and really you're a, quote, provisional appointee to fill the remainder of the term. So I, um, you know, filed for the two, the remaining two years and was fortunate enough, as someone has said, it's a blessing. Uh, uh, but I treated it like a campaign at Excellent. times and, and, and uh, participated in forums and thought that was public, uh, an important public uh, aspect of being well, a you, member of the and board. And you paid your dues because you campaigned before that, sure. you know. Right. Um, and so... <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not, not like you yes. campaigned. <laughs> so, no, that's true. You know, I think, you know, you, I think that was a, a wonderful campaign you ran Thanks. the first time around. And Thanks. So... Um, you know, it's it's kind of it is a blessing that you know you don't have to go through that again. But yeah. um, but now but he has to do it in two years. Yeah. Well, true. If, if you decide to run again, true, true. Yeah. Well, which is one of our questions. Is it? That's well, that's okay. at the end. All right, oh, all right, all right. We'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> but, but Anna's got a lot of questions. All right. Yeah. So, um, I guess you're the the one that we can actually talk to besides Richard about the actual job mm -hmm. of being a school board. Um, member and you know that once the campaign's done and you know we've been talking with with folks here about you know uh, they, they look relieved and you know that's that's all over with but what do you think um, is different about the actual job did you have notions about what it was going to be that are different now that you're doing the actual job what's different that you thought you were going to be able to do or or better, yeah. worse, better, worse about doing the actual job? Well, I think, um, you know, it, w it was something I feel like I was prepared for. I feel like I understood the role of a school board member, just given my professional background. And, uh, Tell us I am, more about that. Yeah, I'm in, I am in public service, and I, and I work for uh, local government. And when you look at it, a school district is one arm of local government. And so there's a lot to uh, governance, local government, uh, that I felt like going into the job and certainly the election, I was prepared for. Mm -hmm. Having said that, you know, I think everyone will tell you, um, you know, you always learn new things and are surprised by some and are reminded of others, even if you didn't, you know, really fully uh, ponder those issues uh, once you get into a role. And uh, there's been some of that. I, I would say on the, for the most part, though, it's been all positive. I, I really have enjoyed, you know, the short term that I've been on the board so far. Um, one of the most um, sort of striking differences between running a campaign and obviously serving as a board member is that a campaign is really sort of um, centered around one person and you're convincing the public that you are qualified for the job and trying to earn the public support. But once you get on the board, as Richard knows very well, you know, it's part of a governance team of five. You're only one vote of five. And, and really, I think to do good work as a public servant uh, and to govern, you really have to 
not only be aware of that uh, difference from the campaign, but you really should embrace it and and seek to <clears throat> earn the support of your colleagues on a particular issue that maybe you know is you're passionate about, but also really have open ears and eyes to things that your colleagues and, and the administration and, and most importantly the public want to see happen. And and so that's one thing about the job that, you know, I knew about uh, from a sort of cerebral academic sense, but when you're in the job, you have to live it and practice it. And um, you know, I I enjoy it. And so being that you also, you know, have a career and, you know, lobbying and other things going on, um, do those skills come into play? I see, you know, I see these, uh, maybe the ability to, to uh, caucus or the ability yeah. to, to uh, convince someone else, um, you know, about your point of view. Um, does a lot of it happen in front of everyone or does it happen behind the scenes? How does that really work? Tell us. Yeah. I'm glad can, that wasn't can, my can question. I, is is yeah. this why I get to phone yeah. a friend and ask, yeah. ask a, a co-host here? Yeah, yeah. phone a friend on that uh, one, uh, would you? Uh, behind the scenes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Brown Act? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, Richard's referencing the Brown Act, which is uh, our, uh, you know, open meetings at law that local governments and school boards right. are required to. So, you know, there's something that uh, uh, some, I wouldn't call insiders, but some people who work in and around local government know there's these Brown Act buddies that you can talk with one other board member, mm -hmm. but you really can't talk with another, you know, one more, you know, three, a majority of the board. because it's very that would, frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, I found that to be the most frustrating thing, coming from the world that you, that yeah. all three of us work in, where you talk to people and try to figure out where right. everybody is and what they want, and then you can only talk to one person build. about it, Yeah, and you can't talk to the other three until you get out there. Yeah, you know, I frustrating. Uh, frustrating you know, maybe one word. I, I also um, I understand the the reason for the Brown Act. I mean, it's obviously for the purposes of having the decisions made in public, and I support that. And it's just one of those things about the job that you have to really understand and work with. And um, you know, I think uh, you'd be surprised. I, I I think most, in fact, all of the decisions on the public. Uh, uh, calendar are made in public, and then you have closed session items, of course. Right. Um, you know those dealing with litigation or personnel matters that. Because right. I think you hear a lot about people saying, "Oh, they came in like they were already they'd already made a decision." They and, don't. And people no. don't really understand that. You know, you really you really can't. You, it's a lot of work. You're going to have to go to each one. <laughs> try, you know. But I think that you know that is how people don't understand yeah. that you know you know you can't really just grab three people no. and say hey come over here we're gonna yeah. we're gonna figure no, this out. No you work it out and, when you're there. Right. And, you do. I mean ask Gina Delighton about the time that she was my buddy on the Brown Act thing and then we all got it started talking about it and I went the other way on it was. <laughs> she still doesn't let me forget that. Well and it's true and you know what it actually speaks to the professionalism of our current board and, yeah. and our predecessors as well. The, the decisions folks do actually happen in public view. Um, and, you know, like I said before, uh, one of the critical jobs, I think, of a good board member is having an open mind and open ears when you're in uh, the hearing in public and when you're about to make the decision because you, know, you might get some information that you hadn't contemplated prior to uh, when you were reading and reviewing the agenda. I, I'd say you always do. Yeah. I mean, you're that's really, probably right, true. In, yeah. in this town, yeah. there's always somebody that comes up with a different angle on, yeah. on whatever the discussion is. Yeah, no, I absolutely. Think Interesting. Bleeding into the school board. What is <laughs> yeah. it? You know what it's. We were going to have a discussion do. about that. So, but just to back up. Yeah. A little bit more about your personal. Yeah. You know, what are some of the things you care about as a school board member and oh. want to see? accomplished Absolutely. during your tenure? Um, well, you know, I, I've always been in, you know, I have public service as my profession, really, and it's more than a profession. It's almost a vocation for me. Um, and I had always been involved in the community when I had children, like many of us do, mm -hmm. and they enter the school system. Uh, I really looked long and hard and wanted to refocus all of my community activities around the schools. And what 
uh, once I did that, I really, you know, began to see that of uh, the importance of having um, diverse representation on a board. And by that, I mean diverse representation from parents, community members that have a range of experiences in our community. And what I thought and what I sought to uh, achieve is really being uh, a voice for younger parents. And, you know, you just had Madhavi before uh, me, and, you know, I was really happy to see her candidacy uh, because, you know, we talked a lot, she and I, about, you know, we are parents of younger children. We're going to be in this district a long time. And anyone who knows anything about government, it takes a long time to achieve, you, you know, your objectives. And so, um, what I, you know, getting to the answer to your question, what I sought out to do was really be a voice for, parents with younger children who are going to be in the system, uh, our educational system for a while, and making sure that the system that we have, that we love now, stays, you know, we maintain what's great about it. We change what can be improved about it over the course of the years that my children will be uh, here. So, I mean, you know. I, are there particular um, it, concerns for the younger Kids or? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, you know, at our uh, one of the things I was struck to learn really in the course of just my involvement in in campaigning is really that um, our elementary schools are great, but there's wide uh, disparities between them, and and you know some educational offerings at one school are different than another. And and I sort of began to look at our district from an equity standpoint and thought, you know, well, look at, we should focus on what we do very well in the elementary schools and see where we can replicate those things and where, you know, we need room for improvement. See what we can do to sort of make sure that a child that goes to school at Marguerite is, you know, has is having the same educational experiences as a child that is going to school at Willett. And I just felt that there were you know some differences in that regard and um, it's one of the things that I think will be important for me uh, to continue to look at and and question as, as we make our policy decisions so. and then the other thing that happens to you is your children grow up and so then you start getting perspectives yes. on you know the uh, the junior Whenever high they're... and yeah. then all of a sudden you Absolutely. realize the high school really is at the crown jewel yes. of the district. Yeah. As when I got on the board as a as an elementary school parent and was told by, you know, maybe other other board members and other people that the high school is the crown jewel of the district. Well, the high school, I don't care about the high school. I'm worried about this, but you know, no, you, you a, do. Oh, absolutely. And then you end up growing up through it, and then I, I agree. And I've already, I already kind of feel myself going in that direction already. You know, someone said once that you know we all end up at at the high school or the you know a few high school right. offerings that we have in our district so we're all going to get to the same place and so it's not too early to start really paying not only paying attention but working on some of those issues it also makes it a much broader experience i think for you personally and for men, for the school board when you realize everything all, all of them yeah. and all the other the schools that we have the da vinci program the dsis i mean it's, yeah. it's amazing king you know king oh. everything that's going on oh. it's just it's pretty fun to work on it really was if i could just add one thing one of the and and i'm so lucky to have you and and to draw on your experiences because I'm able to really appreciate some of the things. When I got appointed, one of the first things I got to do was go to all these graduations. Right. And, and I was really exposed to really what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it was perfect. It gave me a sort of a new energy with, you know, the way in which I'm approaching my work on the board. Um, but you're absolutely right. You know, I hope to one day maybe sit in that chair and, Ooh. and, and you know, come on over. Wax eloquent about, you know, <laughs> we might let him. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I also do appreciate yeah. the differences between our schools as well. You know, I mean, sure. I have two kids, they're 17 months apart and I'm telling you, they're like night and day. You know, one of them went to Davis high and the other one went to Da Vinci. And I really appreciated, um, the ability to have that, that, difference. One is, right, you know, yeah. one is a, a social justice, a political, right. I can't talk them out of it. And the other one is, um, is a, a egghead engineer, you know, I mean, <laughs> right. I, I, you know, she, she loves how things 
got get put together. She's on the robotics team. And so, you know, I mean, I, I do. I, I, you do. Your kids aren't cookie cutter. Your school shouldn't be cookie cutter. But I hear what you say. There shouldn't be, you know, a lapse. We should be, yeah. we should have standards, you know, that, that everyone gets a good experience. And the beauty of the yeah. board, back to your original there point, you go. the beauty of the board Bring it around is having people with different perspectives to then come together and work yeah. as a unit yeah. on the board. So you, maybe you and Madhavi, uh, uh, whoever else gets on there with a younger child perspective, right. and the people that have kids going through or have already or, gone or through. Or have gone through, yeah. Right. Right. yeah, you know? absolutely. And, yeah. Uh, no, you're, you're, you have you're it all on. there, and you go, oh, okay, I understand. You're spot on, but yeah. You, on the uh, graduations, going to the graduations was a big eye-opener for me, too, oh, yeah. and a wonderful experience to sit through the DSIS uh, and the King graduations. Yes. And then and then Da Vinci, you know, I was fortunate to be on the board when Da Vinci was just getting cranked up, and you know, I went to, I remember sitting in, in Matt Best's office in the, in the little portable on the high school going, now, what are you guys talking about? How's that <laughs> fun? What are you going to do? Right. Wow, that sounds like a great idea. I'm glad you're doing it. You right. Know? Right. Pam Mari was doing that before she's over here. Okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, uh, I, we're fortunate, so yeah. don't screw it up. We got a lot okay, going yeah. on there. Okay. <laughs> I have a big, we have, we have a big response. No caucusing yeah. behind the scenes. Well, yes. you, you can do that yeah. just, with, yeah. just with your buddy. Just yeah. Well, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about, you know, the, the colleagues that will add to the board, just the diversity. Ta of talk about that for a second. Yeah. This is a watershed sort of a moment. Yes. We have a three and a two, mm -hmm. but this is a, th this is a three really plus, you know, the fourth. I mean, this, this board is going to be completely different. Yeah. You know, so you now and still new and then and then Susan. Yeah. I mean, I, I think actually... And we'll it, ask Susan that later. Yeah, but and, I, and I think it happens at a great time. I, I respect all of the work that you did and, and my current colleagues on the board, uh, but I also know, you know, there's been major changes, as Anna knows m better than most, in education policy and funding that it, it, it and, and our curriculum and and it's almost sort of an appropriate time for a transition like this. Mm -hmm. um, really, the, 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 the rules in, what, in which we play uh, are changing. And so it's a good opportunity for a board to change. And, and it's coming at a perfect time because they're all, as, as am I, full of energy and excitement, ready they to are. roll up our sleeves and, and, and get to work. So um, it, it is unique, I think, to have this much of a change at right. a time. But I guess I would say if at any time in our recent history, it's a good time for it, now is it. So that's what I makes agree. it even great. I think it's a good time for that. Yeah. I also, one of the other things with school boards too, there's a, a little bit, um, you know, one of the things I read and the many things I was reading this week about school boards is, you know, Back to you're my, often... Back uh, to my wonk thing. She right, did right. A lot, yeah. she did a lot often, of homework yes, for this yeah. show. Yeah. School I, districts no are often like the, the biggest employer in a, in a city, you yes. know, or an area. Um, you know, there's that... The, the employment type things that are going on, the facilities, as you Absolutely. know, which yeah. is you yes. know near and dear to my heart, you know, being able to track all of those things as well Absolutely. that um, that become, you know, a big part of what you do. Um, I I what do you? I guess what was disappointing this last year was the school bond and not seeing mm -hmm. a statewide yeah. facilities bond, which I know in in this district has been kind of an issue yeah. with facilities. Are you are you seeing more of that? Do you think that we'll do local bonds in the future? Well, I, I definitely think that our community needs to have the conversation. Uh, if First and foremost, if for no other reason that I'm not so sure we're going to be able to count on state bonds like we used to. Uh, this governor has pretty much made it part of his uh, administration that, you know, uh, locals do what locals do. Let's let locals do that. But let's really focus on what the state does. And so um, there's a lot of doubt that there will be a state bond anytime soon. And so what does that mean? It means that districts like ours really need to have a sobering conversation, I think, with our community to say, well, folks, you know, it's been since I believe 2000, since our district has had a bond. Um, we were able to do some things this year to um, 
you know, refinance some of our obligations and, and, and uh, for the purposes of making money available for facility improvements and taking, com taking care of some of the deferred maintenance. But, um, you know, the facts are we have an aging infrastructure here yep. in our school district, and it's something that we need to uh, really come to terms with soon. So, yeah, I want to have that conversation. In addition, Good. all of the great work you, that you've done, you know, just when you served and just keeping our district together in, in, with all those cuts and then mm -hmm. renewing our parcel tax. And, uh, you know, that's uh, a conversation that's not too early to start talking about as well. So these things are really going to come together really soon soon in the next couple of years and and um, you know it's it's one of I think my priorities but I think my colleagues are sharing that priority uh, with starting that conversation soon but yeah I, I do think that we need to talk about um, uh, school bond and and what our needs are and and I'll be very curious to see what happens in Woodland and the properties and, uh, oh yeah Woodland has a we'll check on that yeah on the on the bond they do, they are running a um, a bond, a local bond for school facilities. Yeah. One's That'd on safety nice. and one's on facilities. Yes. Yeah, well, it'd be nice to if we can get those results in yeah. a few yeah. minutes SMT, and we'll right? bring those up, right. the woodland ones, just yeah. to see how they're I, doing I think as well. I've, I think I've got it. You've got it too. You, you're the high tech. I, I, on my piece of yeah, paper, I know, I know, the yeah. results haven't shown she, yeah. up. You know, that would be the last yeah. thing people would say. She's five um, minutes okay. ahead of us. <laughs> huh? She is. She, well, yeah. we do. Right. Very she knows much. who. She she knows who's already who's won. She already knows. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. She's not not just absentees. It's, it's, it's all awesome. up here. All right. Thank Alan. you so much, Alan. We really appreciate well, your willingness. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you both for doing this tonight and all that you do for our community. It's a lot of fun. Service. Yeah. A lot of fun. Thanks. So, thanks for coming Thank by. Thank you. All right. Let's all right. Uh, see so if we I can think pull up some, some uh, absentees, well, and maybe you can give us the. Uh, well, I think I have to do the top of the, the hour, top of the hour. The top of the hour. Yes. Legal. Give it. Give us a shot of that. Okay. Would you? So thank you for tuning in to DC TV Channel 15 in the Comcast system. Um, you are watching live coverage of the November 4th, 2014 election. This program is simulcast live on KDRT, also affectionately known as KDRT, um, 95.7 FM in Davis. Um, you know, Davis Media Access has been serving the community for more than 25 years. I highly encourage you to support this uh, community treasure that we have here. Um, other key projects include support for youth media and community media. It takes community support to make this happen, and we hope that you'll consider uh, donating to uh, Davis Media Access. After tonight, their um, contributions are probably going to go through uh, the floor. Just no. because I'm asking. <laughs> They're going to so. tank. What, what sort of absentee uh, do we have here? This is the local uh, school board, and then maybe we can look at those woodland yes. results as well. That would be pretty fun. So you can see that Madhavi ha Sunder has 25.4%, uh, followed by Barbara Archer at 20.7%, Tom Adams at 176 Bob Poppengay there, then Jose Granda, Mike Nolan, and Chuck Reardon. And uh, that's uh, it's pretty close. You know, there's so little up there, it's hard to, to make any sort of conjecture, so we won't. But instead, let's look at the Woodland uh, area um, and would love to see the bonds. This is, in fact, uh, two folks that are running against each other, it looks like here. And here's the Woodland Classroom Repair now, and Upgrade this Measure is S. The, this the is the school facility about. bond repair and upgrades of classrooms. Um, you know, more and more, as we were talking with Alan about earlier, um, the state has uh, basically uh, said they're going to leave it to the locals to um, to do a lot of their um, school construction bonding. We already did believe uh, that we put in more than the 50% that was needed in that matching program, um, but uh, now it's it's we didn't uh, we weren't able to put a bond on a ballot this last year. Um, I think the governor was you not a, willing. A, a state bond. Uh, state for statewide school statewide, bond. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, for right. uh, for facilities, um, and so uh, and so that's unfortunate. But uh, I think there's a sense that locals are going to have to take on more of that. And um, I think he's absolutely right that we're going to be having that conversation in this community. Do you think that really um, 
How many? How many? Do you have any idea how many bond local bonds are on the ballot right now statewide? I. I mean, is it a big number? Are there are a lot it's, of people out it's there. It's a doing fairly that? big number. This last time, I think there was over. It was thirteen billion dollars worth of local bonding in the last round. I didn't really check on statewide how many uh, were running this this year, but it's increasing. I mean, I, I really feel like locals are starting to see that it's up to them to get. And they're going to have done. to. But it looks like in Woodland that that effort's going down, unfortunately. Well, we'll see. Well, we'll see. It's early. Well, we have another guest, I think, mm -hmm. who's joined us in the uh, in the. Uh, Power Central here, <laughs> Mike Nolan. Mike, good to see you. It's good to see you both. Good, good to see you. Um, has, it, uh, has it been everything that you thought it was going to be? You've run before. I've run before, run so before. I understand. Yeah. And, and, and looking at the results right now, it looks like I won't be on the board next, uh, next year oh. or in December. And I want to, first off, congratulate, I think, Madavi and Barbara. And I think Tom will be is leading in third place. Tom's leading, yeah. But uh, but Bob absentees. too. They've no. all done a very good campaign. But that's a generally a, a, a I've, my experience is it's a broad section of the city, and it very rarely does the precinct vote change. So you never know. So we'll see how it all Yogi, goes. Yogi Berra here. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know. But it's over. <laughs> but it one, is over. Wait, it's not over until it's over. It is no, over. No, but the campaigning <laughs> part is, you know, is pretty much over. And, you know, I, I know that we all appreciate anyone who's willing to go out there and, and uh, serve the public in, in this way. And it's a privilege, you know, to be out there talking to people about what they care about. Tell us a little bit about what you heard from, from parents and students as you were campaigning. Well, the best, the best thing is the, uh, of a campaign is meeting all, all the different people from different schools and different communities. Um, you know that Richard being on the on, on the board and the, you find a uh, richness in the city of Davis that is uh, a lot of people forget about but there's yeah. there's a there's a wide range of income d d difference and there's a wide range of racial differences here that uh, Davis gets a bad rap sometimes uh, from outside of the area saying mm -hmm. oh it's too affluent and it's too uh, too monochrome and um, that's that's never been my experience. They don't and it know. Always gets, uh, it always gets to the same, uh, to, to, uh, to see a, uh, we have a vibrant community here. And you can see that also with the, uh, with our school district. And, and in this election where you had seven candidates, and I think all, my, uh, the other six candidates were all well qualified, I think, to be on the board. And I think the uh, voters made the right choice. <laughs> well, We're not, it's not over, it's not completely over yet. I'm, I, not, I'm, I agree. I'm, I'm not staying up late tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. I feel like, um, you know, we had such a stellar group, um, and I know you brought some unique perspectives to to the campaign. I know um, you you were basically the person who gave up, not gave up your career, but you, you were the one that stayed home. The, Stay at home, Dad. Right, and, um, and that's that's a huge sacrifice. Um, I mean, and you've done a lot of um, um, Volun volunteers, right? Work. The PTAs at, at the all PTAs. levels and all. So that. you got yeah. involved there, and we all know that's yeah. like a like a job, working hard to uh, to make sure that the uh, those the, types of organizations run well. The most uh, uh, the the proudest moment of my life in uh, getting elected to anything was getting elected president of the PTA. At Willett Elementary, and that was, uh, uh, yeah, and, th and that that was very that was a fun experience because all of a sudden, as the president, you had to make everybody work together as a yeah. as, as a team, and um, it was really nice to end the meetings on time. <laughs> and and That's Richard, an I, I I saw many meetings at the school board where Richard at about eleven thirty <laughs> at night you would start to. You could start well, to I, squirm I, in your seat. <laughs> that was all because of my mentor, Mr. Tim Taylor. <laughs> and there is a board policy that says all meetings end at 11. Yeah, because of Tim. Unless, yeah. unless the board decides otherwise. Yeah. And if I got elected to the board, I'd say, but, but the, that, that should be included in the, in the agenda. To, to give public notice that the board would say, we're going to go beyond a We're going to go beyond, yeah. Well, Tim and I, I think, had a pact that we would never vote to go beyond. Unless, of course, it was something that either one of us wanted to talk yes. about. And then, you know, we 
you had to vote but for. But you never won. It always, it always <laughs> went on and on and on. Well, you know, that's, that's a talent to be able to run a very efficient meeting and, and get it done on time. I mean, I know we've all been in those situations where, you know, you wish you, wish you uh, the meeting had been over, you know, half an hour ago. You're thinking about dinner and how that all gets done. But, uh, and I think that's a real talent to do, to make sure meetings get done on time. And you have a long history of, of working on a number of, of fronts in terms of the well, volunteer piece. Uh, I'm just, you know, tell me a she little. She did her homework, mine oh did my her God, homework. Yeah, you gotta let her throw it um, out there. I just, well. I appreciate, you know, not only, I appreciate site council and all of that, parent advisory committee, um, but the climate, the climate committees are also very, in, a, a very much interest. What yeah. um, you know? Do you do you see things getting better in the district? And the the, the, the thing Good that we question. the thing that we have to remember about the climate committees is that um, the schools are like a river. There's a continually a c continuous uh, of people moving through it, uh, not just students but parents. Mm -hmm. And so you can have a great climate committee and you can address all the issues of bullying and harassment and discrimination and then in a couple of years they've all left and you mm -hmm. have to bring in new people and hope that they continue to have the same commitment mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so but things change you have a different different people different needs so it's a constant problem uh, that's all I'm saying is that the the climate committees are um, very important because it's the uh, it's a continuing issue in in this school and in, in all schools, in society as a whole. Yeah, I love that. That's a good quote, though, that the school district's like a river. It is, and it's everybody moving through. I always felt that about testing, too. When we compare the fourth grade test this year to the fourth grade test last year or the fourth grade test two or three years before, a whole different set of students probably a lot of different teachers, supposedly the same curriculum, but then we're comparing that fourth grade to the fourth grades. It's, yeah, it's, they, a, it's exactly a weird right. thing, right? It's so, 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 so it's, oh, they did better. Well, it's, a, it's not the same people. It's not the same. It doesn't grade. matter. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's, so it's, it's this, uh, like a prism or, or a kaleidoscope. It's constantly changing. And, uh, and that is, there's good parts and bad parts with that. The good parts is it keeps the school system fresh. Uh, the bad parts, as we just said, is that uh, once you once you think you've got a problem solved, mm -hmm. once you make that decision, you don't, because there, there's going to be there's something else. There's you know it's coming down the road. There's going to be other issues, or that same issue will pop up. My dad um, uh, taught uh, uh, government at Cal Poly. And uh, he did a lot of education, uh, teaching about education. And uh, he, he saved some of his books. That, I mean, I saved them. I've got them. And um, my favorite is this title that says, Our Schools in Crisis, about the terrible state of the public school system and how it's going to lead to complete disaster. Yeah. And it was published and when was written? in 1959. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. exactly. And if you read the table <laughs> of contents, it's the same issues we're talking about now. Yeah. What are we going to do with the gifted students? Yeah. How we're we're shortchanging these students. Mm -hmm. What about the the uh, uh, the Brown versus Board edu of Education and uh, right. integrating schools? How mm -hmm. are we going to deal with all these different communities and schools? Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, all, as you say, it's the river. Back. It moves on. As does this show. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. My segue. So, uh, we've, well, uh, we definitely appreciate, you know, your time and energy. I, I'm assuming that you'll continue if, if you don't. I have a ninth grader. I've got four years left of to, uh, to serve of uh, high need, school. We work. need you too. You, you get to go through high school again. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Yes, so I was another... trying to tell Alan is that you know he's in elementary school and he's going to graduate to uh, junior high and then he yeah, gets go to go to high school. With them. You, your perspective changes. Yes, you don't understand the school district until you get the high school graduation. Right. And you hear the graduation speeches. Then, 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 uh, but that's that puts the cap on the whole whole process. The magnitude exactly. of it too. Right. Yes. Thanks a lot, Mike. All Thank right. you for coming. Thank you very right. much. Well, Anna, what are we going to do now? I think maybe talk about some of the statewide races okay. and statewide propositions and hear your analysis. Of, oh, my uh, analysis of, of, the of state. all of them. I think that would be a good idea. <laughs> well, let's look at the results. Let's, that's so far, we have Prop Proposition one? 1, which is the water bond. This was the bond, uh, basically, you know, we had 
one done earlier, and now they there was a lot of discussion um, this year about getting and uh, passing this bond and making sure that it was tightened up in a way that we needed it to be. A lot of people in Davis kind of active on a on lot this, of people on yeah. this water. A lot bond. of people in Davis worked uh, for a variety of interest on Proposition One. I think it became very bipartisan, mm -hmm. uh, bicameral. Bye-bye. Uh, so bye -bye. Uh, yeah, so that it one, looks like it's doing very well. That one looks good. Proposition 2, the, gov the governor tied the two of those together. That's uh, They call it budget stabilization or the rainy day fund. Right. Uh, the Not governor to be spent with water. Water, right. But it was right. coupled with it to show right. that we needed a rainy day fund to right. take care of those times when it wasn't raining, if you will, but money school, or water. School district concerns about about what was in there. There um, are some uh, some tweaks to it that, uh, in one person's view, probably should have happened. But it uh, that looks like that's passing right. readily too. That Very essentially strong. was the governor's campaign. Uh, Proposition 45. This is the one that gives uh, the politician all of the uh, <laughs> all of the power to set your health care rates. If you listen to some of the ads, or it's the uh, as it has been characterized, this will allow the uh, insurance commissioner to protect consumers and uh, set health care insurance rates. And it looks like it is um, going down to defeat. We don't know how many, if this is all absentees or where they're from. And as we uh, found out in the June primary, some of these things Still can come right down to right. The, the wire. Ask uh, Speaker Perez about that. Proposition 46 is the uh, testing of doctors, which is really the really had Ability nothing to do with any of that. Raises it's about the cap on micro, which is uh, negligent negligent lawsuits. Right. Uh, this is put on the ballot uh, by the trial bar. Um, we maybe ought to do drug testing of the trial bar for putting <laughs> on something uh, that is going down to so much defeat. But of course, there were, uh, I think the official term was gazillions of dollars yes. spent uh, in this race on both sides. But it looks like it's uh, going down to defeat uh, a lot. Proposition 47, interesting on the um, criminal sentences and uh, misdemeanor re reducing uh, time people are going to spend in jail right and with all of the decentralization and uh, you know overcrowding and the cost and who do we put in in uh, jail and why looks like um, people are concerned about yeah I think that. they are and uh, interesting that that's passing by so much don't right you think? Uh, this one, you know, yes for no, no for yes, yes for yes. I mean, I mean, this is uh, very interesting. The people that put this on the ballot did not want the casino, but you, they write, write it in a way to make sure that if you vote yes, that casino gets built uh, out there in, uh, off of Highway 99, uh, and if you vote no, it doesn't. So the, the opponents of the casino, who happen to be people that have their own casinos, uh, it looks like they're winning that one. I'm glad you knew so much about that. I just know it was supported by the governor and other folks too. That's all I, that's all I know about it is what I just, yeah. the way I disparaged Good it job. right then. Yeah, it's the best I could do. Uh, Proposition 49, there is no such thing, but there will be in the future. <laughs> um, you know, this, is, um, this has been a lot of fun here tonight talking about um, the school board races and of course talking about some of those other uh, statewide um, there are a lot of other assembly district races going on up and down the state uh, Senate races uh, Sacramento County's got uh, a couple of very highly charged races uh, Dr. Pan in the, who's in the assembly now is running against uh, Roger Dickinson who's also in the assembly they're running for that Senate seat uh, it'll be interesting to see um, can we shortly. see yeah, the maybe. SPI race and and here we can look at our own assembly district which is uh, Mr. Dodd looks like he's winning winning that handily Bill Dodd is the Napa County Supervisor we should be talking to him later and we're gonna have him on the telephone uh, later on and uh, that'll be great um, I think people will enjoy uh, Mr. Dodd and his representation of, of Davis. There's another race in um, Sacramento County as well, the race between uh, Jim Cooper and Daryl Fong. Uh, I think that's a, a highly contested race, and we'll get some results on that one too and see how they're, um, see how they're doing in that. Uh, and SBI, you mentioned the uh, superintendent of public instruction. I don't know if this is current, but that, it looks very close. What do you have there in a 52 number? 52 
0.7% for Tom Torlakson and 47.3% for Marshall Tuck. About how many precincts do we have on that? Um, it doesn't, let's see. Not that many, probably. 11% of precincts reporting. Pretty much absentee. So it looks like the, exi the sitting superintendent, Mr. Torlakson, who was just in Davis the other day, it looks like uh, Tom's uh, ahead on that one, huh? Oh, there and it is. And I think there it is on, up, on the, um, up on the screen. Lots and of, lots of. You can also see the governor there, uh, uh, Edmund G. Jerry Brown Jr. is beating Mr. Kashkari. I, I can't read the numbers. That's, I, I have on my computer 54.7% to 45.3%, which is closer than I thought it would they be. They were hoping that uh, Kashkari could get to 40%. Uh, if he stayed at 45%, that'd probably be seen as a bit of a moral victory for him if right. there is such a thing. Right. Uh, that said, the governor didn't try. So, you know, the governor was doing uh, doing other things. And I just going back to that SPI race, I think there's just been some interesting, um, you know, uh, opposition. I guess the, the adversarial... Uh, parties, um, the you know, IEs, the independent expenditure yeah, campaigns. Right. It, it's been an interesting um, to see who's been putting money in each of those races, um, and we'll see. It's coming. It, you know, they were expecting it to go down to the wire. Um, it's it's it Tom Torlakson's right now, but it looks it could, could be go, very very close on these statewide anywhere. races, like we saw in June. It was very interesting where the um, uh, the race for uh, controller came down literally to a recount because it was so right. close. So right. talk about your every vote counts, you know. Right. That was uh, that was the case there. And that may happen by the end of the night. It's still really early. But it's not too early to introduce and to talk to another one of our school board candidates. And I think we have Bob Poppengay here. And, right. he, and a special uh, guest. And he brought a special guest who I think maybe Bob you could introduce for us. Well, this is my youngest daughter, Zoe Poppengay. Hi. Hi, Zoe. Hi. You ever been on television before? No, this is my first time. Really? You're doing All right, great. So, <laughs> you know, you. we're kind of important because we're on TV. <laughs> you know. It's her first yes. time on TV. Yes, yeah. we're very important. Thank you for coming. Thank you. It's good uh, for coming with your dad. And this, and thank you for, for coming oh, by. My pleasure. It's a lot so, of fun when we get to do this. Please. You've been, this is, you know, we're, we're very informal here. Um, so, you know, and the, let's face it, you've done your job, campaign's <laughs> done. Um, now we just wait and see, you know, what comes in. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you feel at this point about um, the campaign and, and how it went for you? Well, I actually feel very good. Uh, you know, it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of time. You know, it's interesting that uh, you think back, you just amazed that this, evening actually arrives because you, you start, uh, you know, maybe eight, nine, ten months ago. Right. Uh, so I think it's uh, gone well, and uh, I'm proud of the campaign that we were able to put together. That's good. I know, um, I, I've been saying this to almost every person, candidate who's come in, you know, it just seems like we had such a stellar group um, who were, you know, uh, willing to serve each bringing a little bit of a different perspective um, and yours really different you know you're a veterinary medicine professor at sure. UC Davis mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to talk about you know treating kids like you know like <laughs> Like, but, like, like veterinary, like we need to, but what do you think, we're having, that fun, was yeah. we're having fun at this, we're getting <laughs> punchy, um, but what do you think, um, you know, what I see with UC Davis has been, you know, opportunities that we can have for collaboration um, with the university, but um, I, I, I just love to hear your perspective on whether that's feasible and how it might happen. I mean, it seems like we know that we've we have various um, programs that we you know work with them and mm -hmm. volunteers and other things. Mm -hmm. But is there more we could be doing? Well, I th I think there's actually quite a bit more that we could be doing. Um, you know, we've got a world class university right in our backyard, thirty five thousand um, undergraduate graduate students. So it's a big university, uh, tremendous faculty resources and even staff resources. And, uh, you know, I think the school district is very important to the university. Uh, it's why a lot of faculty actually wind up in Davis uh, because of the reputation of the schools. 
so you know, I, I think it's going. There are some partnerships that have been, um, you know, established. Uh, but I sort of look at it more strategically. And a lot of the partnerships, I think, are dependent upon individuals. Mm -hmm. So when those individuals retire or move on, yeah. um, those mm -hmm. partnerships tend to fall apart. So I'd like to have a more sustainable mm -hmm. uh, interaction. I, and I think it could help really all of our students. Um, you know, one of my thoughts is that they have very uh, comprehensive summer programs for, for uh, public education kids, you know, K for, through 12. Not K, but at least... Uh, the younger kids in junior high and high school, they have a great uh, summer program. They have things like robotics and theater, and right. Zoe has taken advantage of some of those. But right. there are a lot of kids that either don't know about the programs or can't afford the programs, and I think it'd be great to get those at-risk kids more involved and uh, come up with some ways that they could participate over the summer. And I think that would uh, serve a couple of purposes. It would get them on campus mm -hmm. and so they could maybe experience something they've not experienced before and maybe look at some possibilities. Um, but it also would allow them to maybe not fall as far behind during the summer as a lot of those kids actually wind up falling behind right. because they just haven't had those added enrichment experiences. Yeah, those university camps are uh, very important, can be a lot of fun. Zoe, what was the most fun you had helping your dad run for office? I think I kind of enjoyed walking through the neighborhood sometimes. Door to door with the asking yeah. people, yeah. Normally I just um, stuck the papers on the doorknobs, but sometimes I went with my dad and he knocked on the doors. Um, yeah, I think that was kind of interesting and a little exciting sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You good. never know what you're going to get. So we've you got a new precinct walker. There you That's go. That's right, right. <laughs> well, I, I think it was great to have her walk with me because it really sort of opened up the conversation with the people that you're knocking the door on the door sure. with. And, um, I made know. my kids walk. It's good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, it's good exercise. And <laughs> we're such yeah, a, a we're such a student oriented town. You know, one of the things that struck me while you were talking was just, you know, I remember with UCD is is just you know, as the kids get older, having those things, you know, the summer programs as well, because mm -hmm. it seems like there's a lot going on when they're younger f during the summer camps and things, but then you hit kind of a point where, um, you know, it's harder to find those, those summer programs mm -hmm. that work for the older kids. And so that'd be an interesting place to go as well, I think, with the university. But you know. Well, I, I think there's a lot of opportunities in a lot of different areas, yeah. and you know, some of the kids that are a little bit further advanced, there might be some opportunities to, sure. you know, take computer science or robotics. They do have some of those classes available. Mm -hmm. sure. So I think the really the the sky's the limit, and I think it's trying to establish, you know, a good dialogue between the district and the and the university, and and just to keep up the conversation, see where we could, could collaborate. So it looks like it's pretty close. But you're certainly right, right up there and into it. So, any sort of thoughts on kind of the horse race of it or the political part of that? I know any other, any other thoughts as you sit here now? It's all over and it's, you know, I mean, you're, just, you're hoping for the best, obviously. <laughs> sure. But well, you know, I, I sort of approach it a little bit uh, philosophically as well. I mean, I, I think the important thing for me was to, you know, really put in the effort and and to get out there and talk to folks and. Uh, you know, run a good campaign, and I'm very proud about what we were able to accomplish in a relatively short period of time. So obviously I would like to win, um, uh, you know, but I am proud of what we were yeah. able to, yeah, to do. Yeah, you ran a good campaign. You, you, it seemed like it. you got your message out, know, you ran hard, that was good. Right. And it wasn't easy, huh? <laughs> well, there's, there's a lot of, a neophyte uh, getting into a campaign, there's a lot of things you learn on the fly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think you don't realize how many moving parts there are to a yeah. campaign. So, you know, trying to coordinate that and, uh, you know, keep what everything did, going is, is a challenge. Right. What did you hear from uh, the people, from parents, about what they'd like to see um, going forward? Well, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you know, being a veterinarian and thinking of the, the, of the uh, animal um, you know, approach. <laughs> uh, you know, it's sort of like herding cats. I mean, right? you talk yeah, to yeah. parents, <laughs> and true. they have so many so different. It's, right? it's a perfect analogy <laughs> from you. I love that. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, you know, they they all have issues that they're passionate about, and it's rare to find. Uh, you know, sort of a 
congruence of those issues. So right. They're, no, very true. Um, and so it was very fascinating to find out all the different issues that people are interested in. And it, it was, you know, it, it ranged all the way from very important things like teacher retention and uh, trying to close the achievement gap to, you know, having the football field lights on at yeah. 1 a.m. and affecting the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, or having school lunch or, or breakfasts that are still too high in sugar. So, I mean, it, it mm -hmm. just, uh, yeah. you know, uh, was the whole gamut of different issues that were brought up. But that was part of the fun, too. <laughs> and not everybody okay. realizes that school board may not have the ability to, to influence all those things, but it's always interesting to hear people's perspectives on, right. on all of it. Well, I think the thing of a school board member, too, is you have a lot of really issues that you need to deal with immediately uh, that require attention, but you right. also have to be thinking 10, 15, 20 years out because some of the def uh, decisions that you're making, you know, have that impact uh, for that length of time, mm -hmm. uh, potential impact. So I think you're, you've got to be a multitasker to be a, a school board member. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the other, if I just can interject a little bit, a thing that, that I did not think about that much when I was running, but which really came home and really hit me was the responsibility you have dealing with suspensions and expulsions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you get on the board, you'll see what I mean. I mean, it's a very, it's pretty incredible sort of, um, you know, changing and affecting these students' lives on a one, you know, one by one right. basis. And it's a pretty heavy responsibility. Right. And you find that it's, uh, it really weighs on you. It did on me. And really? I, I think every, on, on everybody, it really does. And it's right. uh, it's yeah. not a lot of what you talk about when you're out on the campaign trail. Right. Well, one thing that I'm a very strong proponent of is uh, restorative justice. And I think we hopefully will be moving beyond just merely suspensions because I don't think that does anybody any good. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the whole idea of restorative justice has the potential for maybe helping to mitigate some of the you know, issues that school boards have had to deal with in the past in terms of suspensions and uh, so I think there's a lot of promise in that. Yeah, that's good. good. What um, What's the um, overall arch, uh, overarching thing that you would take that you've taken away from from this campaign? When I mean, you mentioned some of it, but just to we got to wrap up a bit. What's right. the, what What do you want to leave with? I mean, well, you're still in the hunt here, so. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, Davis. Oh, we've asked everybody too. If you don't, if you right. don't win, are you going to run again? We've asked everybody that. Uh, I would need a, I'd have to think long and it's hard, hard about that. It's hard to say right now. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, uh, this is probably not the time to Right, ask right. <laughs> um, you know, it's been a great experience. And, uh, you know, this is a community that has so many resources. And, you know, it really is an education community. And I, I think if we could somehow, you know, approach our schools uh, more as a community, uh, I think that we could, uh, you know, uh, deal with some of the problems that uh, or challenges that we're facing. So I think that's it. It's just, uh, you know, a tremendously involved community, and I think that we can get it right in public education. That is, that, that's a good ending there sound go. bite right there. That's Sounds great. Sounds good to me. Thanks a lot for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Not I'm all very television much is this crazy <laughs> and disorganized your, your and willingness informal. To serve. <laughs> but uh, thank you for helping your dad. That's really what it's all yeah. about, too. Thanks, Mom. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anna, why don't we turn to some more results? Maybe okay. the Secretary of State uh, Secretary of State race. There we go. We have it up here. This is interesting. 59. Well, Alex Padilla seems to be doing uh, quite well. For 59 to uh, 40.9. So basically 60, 60, 40. I think there were some people that thought that might be... Um, a lot closer, but this is Yolo County returns only. So that's interesting. So Alex is doing oh, pretty, right. pretty well here in Yolo County. Got to remember that that's just what we're looking at. And I think they were going to give us, there we go, the third district congressional race. That is not a surprise in Yolo County at all. And uh, Mr. Garamendi and that sort of a, I'm not going to call it a toss up district because it really isn't. This is, he's done a great job and this is a democratic district. Looks like Yolo County uh, understands that and agrees with that analysis, I guess, at 65% almost. So congratulations there so far to uh, John Garamendi on that. 
Um, we have other results that you want to throw up uh, onto the screen that we can uh, we can look at if you do. Um, um, feel free. Let's We're, see what else do we have here. Well, in a few minutes, we'll talk uh, to some uh, to some other candidates. That's for sure. Um, I wonder if um, w do you have uh, any of those Sacramento races on your screen? I wonder if they have any back there. It'd be interesting. There's a lot of people that uh, work in Sacramento and have been working on those campaigns, and maybe we'll get to those uh, in a few minutes after we talk to our um, next guest, who, by the way, is here. I almost had it. Okay. Well, good. Hang, hang on to it. <laughs> Barbara Archer's here. How are good you? evening. Good How are evening. you? Well, we're good. We're here. We're uh, helps to talk to people you know. We're there having you fun. Go. Yeah, <laughs> we know. It. Actually, it's, this has been great. It's been a uh, uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we're we're just trying to keep it going and trying to keep to our script and do what we need to do. But it's good to see you. It looks like you're in second place. You must be yeah. feeling good about it. Huh? Yeah, yeah. For now, I'm I'm uh, you know so pleased that it's looking good. Um, the last time I looked um, before my drive over here, it was still only six precincts reporting. So I'm not sure if we have new I think news. It was Eleven. Yeah. Uh, I think we saw 11 this last time. No, I don't know if it was 11 precincts or if it was 11%. But I, percent. Yeah, right. yeah, I feel great about probably. the campaign we ran. I thought it was 100% positive. We executed on everything we intended to do. We talked with a lot of voters, and so I couldn't be more proud of my campaign team. Uh, and I just, I loved the process. I had such a great time. And you still look like you have so much energy left. Naps are important. <laughs> Naps are important. Yes. Thank you. I no. agree with that. I'm a big nap guy. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I have a lot of energy and I really thought, boy, with this process, I might have met my match <laughs> because it is it is pretty, yeah, you know, pretty intense. But no, I feel great. And I, I pretty it's, much it's everyone a good said sign that. Yeah. that I'm, you know, happy and, and ready to go. So um, you've been involved in the issue campaigns. You've never been a candidate before. That's correct, And yeah. somebody said to me the other day, how come Barbara Archer never ran for anything before? Well, I guess, uh, you know, I was busy raising my kids uh, and working. Uh, you know, Richard can relate. I um, uh, was blessed with twins and had an older child, too. Oh so three under three. Uh, and that took a long time to, you know, work that out. Now the kids are older. Um, my older son is a sophomore in high school now. He's 15. And the twins are 12. And uh, That's I have, a busy time, too. It's, it's a busy time, too. And I'm really happy that uh, my job allows me to um, be flexible and, and be there for them, you know, when I need to. And I'm, uh, I ho I'm home a lot of afternoons. Um, you yeah, know, that's to, good. To have a little, nice. have a little chat. Uh, with the kids, and you were volunteering as well, so there's all of. Well, she's always always been a big time volunteer. Yeah, well, it's it's funny because um, the the my family will probably not see too much difference. I mean, obviously the right. school board is a pretty big deal, um, but you know if I'm elected, um, you know I, I I've been out to meetings for years. Right. You know, it's just another one of mom's things. So um, you know, my my family really supports my volunteer work. Um, I, I hope it's setting a really great example for my children. Right. Um, and I love doing it. I mean, it, I'm, I'm compelled to do it. You know, what, what I get out of it, um, you know, is really the service is a gift to me because it makes me feel great to help. We all know that story. Yeah. I, I think, you know, we were talking about, you know, with each of the candidates about their unique skill sets that they're bringing um, in, in their campaigns. And I, you know, I, I Talking about volunteering versus, you know, campaigning. I mean, I, your background in public relations, I think, helps because you're able to focus your messages and be able to say, this is what I'm about. You know, figuring that out and being able to do that is a talent, you know, and I think that that's part of... Um, Part of what makes someone who campaigns well, and your first time, you know, pretty amazing. You know that that you were able to to get out there and and talk about um, issues that you honed in on. And what did you hear back from parents about what they cared about? Boy, I, I heard quite a lot. Uh, I I heard from parents on uh, many many issues. Uh, I heard from them on the the sleep issue, which came up this year. Right. Uh, 
I heard from them on That's the issue where we start school later so that folks can so that kids can sleep because of the study about brain right. the function circadian being, rhythm changes right, in teenagers right, right. and so they um, they, they, they need more sleep mm -hmm. uh, anyway but then they you know have to um, the, the melatonin levels don't allow them to fall asleep as earlier as they did when they were younger so a lot of people were talking about that of course um, my dad would say really right you, know, you need to get you know really we need to let you sleep sleep in um, but, <laughs> you yeah know, I mean sure. I think this sure. is well, you know, an interesting issue I it's mean, an I, issue that you know we'll we will you know we will look at and right? and, and see if it yeah. works for DJUSD and it was brought up before it has been brought up many times before and wait for the pushback from athletics that's just all I sure there. of course because yeah. that's course. that's it there's not enough time in the day right for all right. of us to have our kids do everything we want them right. to do or they want to do especially about and now where the time change and the you're time going changes later. and athletics all of a sudden got squeezed right and, yeah uh, uh the parcel tax is a big issue yep i think which you played a role in and in the one in right i i, I co-chaired the 2012 12. um measure c campaign right. uh and that was a great experience for me i really got to know our budget uh, I really, you know, I talked with hundreds of voters. I wrote a lot of op-eds for the paper, so I had to do a lot of research on school mm -hmm. finance. Um, and, you know, parents are, you know, really wondering, well, you know, do we still need this? Absolutely, we do. Uh, and, you know, we, we need to really message, as you know, talk mm -hmm. about messaging, mm -hmm. we really need to message our community appropriately, um, starting now, really, um, you yeah. know, if, uh, you know, everyone, you know, who goes to a concert at, you know, the Brunel Concert Hall, grandparents, um, you know, parents, imagine that stage empty, or everyone who goes to a sixth grade science fair, or everyone who goes to a library night, you know, imagine those places empty. Um, and, uh, and that's why the parcel tax is important. And, and I think, you know, people do understand that. I mean, this is an education town. People put a huge value on what we're able to provide uh, to our students. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, uh, the economy and, and how many taxes we had to run, you know, we, we had, a, we, we're having a little fatigue, but I, I think we can, we can message it appropriately and really, you know, uh, re-educate the community on, on what we're able to do with their help. Well, and I think the property issue was interesting. You know, the the questions about whether or not, you know, we we're looking for funding wherever we can get it. You know, and at the same time, you have you know you have valuable properties that you know people can make good arguments for keeping or selling. You know, we also see facilities as an issue, and that's a separate pot of money that may require local bonding. I mean, it's it's a lot of different things that I think this school board is going to be. Dealing with good school luck. finance is so <laughs> complex. Right? You really have right? to know your stuff, right. and we're going to have to ask a, a lot um, of questions Which in this in this process. Yeah. And you know what? What I have seen over this campaign is, um, I think whoever gets elected, you know, accountability is going to be a big issue, uh, yes. and everyone is going to ask the questions that need to be asked. So we're informed and the community is informed. Uh, I, I think, um, you know, we're, we're going to see a lot of, you know, in-depth discussion about these issues. Mm -hmm. um, so we know exactly the choices we're making because, you know, um, the, the current school board, I mean, they, they had to do such a difficult job. And, you know, and Richard was, was part of this, um, you know, keeping us afloat during incredibly difficult times. Right. And so now we're in better times and we have a little bit of money, but we have to be cautious uh, and we have to really examine, uh, you know, what our priorities are going to be. And it really behooves us to ask a lot mm -hmm. of questions and really make the best choices we can, you know, for the entire school district. Yeah. We had the conversation about how school boards really are, you know, they, they work together to make decisions. It's, it's more of a, of a valuable skill to be able to convince your fellow school board members about one thing or another because you really are kind of a team uh, going forward when you make these decisions, which, you know, I think 
um, is on issues like that is very important because people are watching to see that you've taken the time to examine all of these things and that everyone has had their say so that once the decision is made, you know, you can go forward and say, yes, this is, you know, we deliberated and it's, it's done. So. Yeah, I'm really confident that um, the, the board will uh, be able to build consensus and will be respectful of one another and um, will be able, you know, to really uh, talk together. Uh, and, you know, we might not always agree with each other on everything, uh, but, you know, to come to consensus and, and make good decisions. Uh, we, we already, I think, you know, have a leg up. We were um, all present at a Yolo County um, uh, board of Edu or not Board of Education, the Yolo County uh, Office of Education. Uh, so you want to be a school board member. We talked about ethics. We talked about governance teams. Um, what what it takes Important. to be a good governance mm -hmm. team. That's so critical. And I know that the new board plans to have a retreat as well uh, to talk about priorities and issues. And so I think you know That's we important. really want to be a functional body for a functional school district. Yeah. That's, uh, that's great. It's important. Very, very Well, Madhavi knows how to make those t -shirt, team t-shirts. Yeah. Put that... them all together and, and be, <laughs> <laughs> be team Davis school board. There you no, go. No, I think it's, I, I think that's what people, you know, that that is, that is it. You're going to have to work together to make really tough decisions in the next few years. So we, we look forward to seeing how you how you do that, but I think you're off to a great start. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, we still have a, a, a little bit of time. I want to know what was the biggest surprise to you? Because you have done the other campaigns and, you know, we work together on parcel yeah. taxes and all that. But as a candidate, what was just kind of the overall biggest surprise to you? Well, I guess two things. Um, I was just so energized and happy throughout this campaign. I mean, I just, I just thought, Boy, I guess you're doing the right thing because I really, really loved uh, talking to people and hearing mm -hmm. their stories. Um, and the other side of that was uh, I was a little bit surprised how, um, you know, uh, a lot of folks out there really were yearning for a culture shift within the district. They really want it to be more customer service oriented. You know, they don't want, you know, a culture where, you know, we have to pitch a fit or file a lawsuit, mm -hmm. you know, to hear people. And so I think that's something that, you know, we'll, we'll want to work on too is, is um, what are the things that we can put in place so our community really feels that their concerns are heard? Yeah. And yeah. that you have their trust. The transparency piece, I think, is just huge. huge. Yep. Um, I agree. And I, I know that uh, I think folks are looking forward to seeing a new set of folks. Not that, you know, that it wasn't terrific. I think that, you know, they really did lead us through some some tough times. They sure did. I have the Collecting utmost money in boots and, and all the them. things that we did. And I think that, um, you know, moving forward, we need visionaries and moving forward and transparency and accountability. I agree Good. with you. Good. Well, thank you, Barbara. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's been. Uh, I been can't a lot believe of fun. how rare and to go she's still. I know I'm pretty awake tonight. <laughs> <laughs> she's, gonna, she's walking out there and taking a nap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I took it already today. So. Yeah. Okay. No, no. Yeah, Very good. energized. Good. good. All right. All right. Thanks a thank lot. you All right, so thank much. You. See you later. Okay. Okay. Well, what are we going to do now? On I We've don't got know. some other races. You have that race you well, were going to pull up there. Well, I don't know. I keep having trouble I with think, this. Um, We've got uh, Secretary go. of State uh, ready to come up, maybe, and then take another look at the Congressional. This is Secretary of State. Um, is this just our county, or this is all counties? It looks like it is. Uh, oh, good. This is statewide. And uh, you'll see here, um, it's on the screen. I can't Some, read Somebody that. will see it. There we go. I can't uh, actually read that, to tell you the truth. It's and this is, but the Secretary people at home can see that Pete Peterson is now leading in this race. Uh, oh, there we go. Look, 50.3% for Pete Peterson and 49.7% for Alex Padilla. Um, so that's tight, tight, tight. Pretty and good. then the other one is. And, and that's statewide. Yes, that yeah. is statewide. There you go. Uh, what about this congressional race here? I the John Garamendi race and uh, 
Well, uh, this, well, there we had a Dave Jones. Okay, we'll go to that. Oh, this is the Doris Mansui. There's John Garamendi, still just Yolo County, and with the same one that we had. Be interesting to see how he's doing in those other counties which one do you spread want around to look the at? district. SPI? Oh, I'm just looking at what they're looking at on the screen, which is the Dave Jones winning that one pretty handily. Um, that's not a surprise. It's not a surprise that all the Democrats uh, should be leading and probably will win uh, most of the races uh, that's on the ballot. That's county results, state. right? Yeah, that's all the counties. So that's more than just um, uh, Yolo County. And there you've got uh, the governor, Jerry Brown, uh, beating Ka Neil Kashkari again, 57% uh, to 43. So statewide, if we look, uh, maybe if you go to the SOS, the Secretary of State uh, website, but what I've got here is Dave Jones, 51.9, uh, Ted Gaines, 48.1. Um, on the I insurance think she just commissioner. Threw that, they just had that one up there. Maybe you've got another one. Why don't well, you, this is statewide. Right, I don't she, know. That was statewide, too. Okay. Well, well, Why don't you give us well, treasurer? Let's see. Treasurer. That oops, one's that's nope, not going to be. Attorney General. Oh. All of those will be, uh, I think, probably not very close. 55.7 for John Chang and 44.3 for Greg Conlon. There you go. Statewide. And then uh, pretty soon we're going to have uh, Bill Dodd actually on the telephone with us. I wonder how the Bill Dodd race is oh, going yeah. still. Do we have uh, that? No. We had that okay. a little while ago, but that, we just have the Yolo County race uh, results. Lieutenant Governor, should we look at that? Yeah, that'll be pretty funny. Uh, Gavin Newsom, 53.9%. That's all. Ron Nearing, 46.1%. With it might be interesting that, that by the you know by the end of the night it might be interesting that this low low turnout that they're talking about you know the lowest turnout in uh, in a generation uh, yeah we'll see it, if that that's might have an impact huh I mean in a race like that Gavin Newsom with all the name ID and money and right uh, running against someone who is really just a political party person. Um, for that lieutenant governor, or maybe people don't care about the lieutenant governor, and regardless of who it is, could be that too. Uh, what, are, what are the other ones that you have here on the statewide? Um, it's still pretty much the same with Jerry Brown and Neil Kashkari. Uh, Brown with 56.8%. This is with 18% of the precincts. What about that one? Let's look at SPI. SPI. Which is 18.7% of precincts. Uh, Tom Torlakson, 54.2%. Uh, Marshall Tuck, 45.8%. And that's statewide. So. Well, why don't we see if we have Bill Dodd on the telephone and uh, we can uh, talk to him? Bill, are you on the telephone with us? I'm right here with you. Thank you very much for calling. Well, <laughs> there you go. And we can hear you, so uh, we like that. Welcome uh, to Davis, at least uh, that way. It's Richard Harris and Anna Hi, Ferreira fun. here. So oh, fantastic! Good to hear your voice. Yeah, nice to hear yours too. Well, the campaign is over, and the, let the governing begin, huh? Oh, that's for sure. I, you know, this has been a long sixteen months, and uh, you know, I can tell you, I learned more in the primary running against. Uh, you know, Dan and Joe that I did this last uh, three or four months, but uh, I, I, I'm just glad to have this over with and, and get up there and get to work and, uh, you know, represent the, you know, the entire district. But I'll tell you, I really appreciate how, uh, you know, Davis has come out for me during this campaign. What were you hearing from our folks here in Davis? Are they, are the issues different from the ones in Napa, or do you see them being similar? No, I really see them being similar. I mean, you know, one, one of the things about Davis is I really, out of all the cities that I represent, it's not to be critical of any of the other cities, but uh, politically, there's no more engaged community than the city of Davis that I've ever witnessed. <laughs> and it's really been a pleasure to, you know, be there. The, the issues are the same, but there are more people interested and engaged in those issues. Well, they are, it is certainly an engaged uh, community, and um, I'm glad you appreciate it now. Maybe we'll check back with you in about six months and see how much you appreciate it. 
<laughs> He's not being sarcastic. Son. Well, I, like, I, I, would, I would like to do that. I've lived here a long time, Bill. I get to take <laughs> shots at, at ourselves, you know? <laughs> So well, and we, and we certainly appreciate, you know, it, it's been, it was, you know, a wild and crazy race. And, you know, we're... The primary especially. Exactly. Yeah. We're, you know, we're used to being on top here in Davis. And so um, it's good to, it's good to have, uh, to hear that you have listened to our concerns and will continue to do so because uh, you'll hear from us for sure. Um, I know <laughs> yeah, you... No, there, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I know you spent some time on the Transportation Commission and, you know, you bring a wealth of experience on uh, water as well. And I know that's some issues that we're struggling with locally, um, you know, water rates and things. Um, so we look forward to you bringing those, uh, those issues um, and your experience in those issues uh, here and looking at our concerns as well. Well, you know, I look forward to that. And, you know, I, I, I'm going to just make a plug, and this may be, uh, I don't know, I, I, I just have really felt like uh, the guys that I really ran in this campaign against, this is nothing against Charlie Schaub, but uh, I do kind of want to do a shout-out for Dan Loke and Joe Cravoza. You know, we had a, a great uh, you know, primary campaign on really significant issues I learned a lot from those guys on a myriad of issues, and uh, I really am intent on being, not on being, on having the city of Davis and the county of Yolo saying, hey, you know what, this guy from Napa can represent us, um, you know, equally, and, I, and, I, and that's my goal. <laughs> well, it's a, good, it's a good goal, and uh, knowing both uh, the mayor and the former mayor, I'm sure you're going to hear from both of them regularly. And uh, uh, just because that June primary has passed, uh, those guys are still both pretty engaged. And, uh, you know, you can... Oh, yeah. They're a good resource, Yeah, a good sure. resource. And, and lean oh, they're on. great resources. And, and, and look, at, for them to come out and support me and uh, engage in my campaign here, my just I think too. says a lot. They're both classy guys, and I've enjoyed working with them, and I'll enjoy, continue to work with them. Now, Bill, you were uh, a Napa County supervisor for a long time, and you're going to bring that local government perspective into the, into the legislature, and it's going to be a legislature that has a lot of turnover. What, how do you see all that coming out, and, and what do you see your role in the new legislature? You know, it's really interesting. As I look at the new legislators coming in, a lot of them are younger, uh, you know, people that have been on a school board, which is, you know, admirable. And, uh, but I look at myself as somebody that comes in with a little bit, not a little bit, substantially more experience. And, um, you know, hopefully I can, uh, I, I kind of look at Jerry Brown and look at him being the adult supervision in the room for the last uh, term that he's been on. I really admire, I don't, I don't admire the, uh, the, the bullet train. I don't admire the, you know, the, the tunnels, but many other things that he has done there. I think has been uh, really good for the state of California, and I hope I can bring that and also the ability to uh, work together uh, with others to get things done. I uh, the I guess the earthquake has just been a little bit more on the minds of of the folks in Napa. I know. Um, you know, I don't know if that's something that um, you're you're looking at um, going forward. But I know when you look at infrastructure and all of those things, um, something like that hits, and you realize, um, you know, things like the the Bay Bridge and other things that you know related to infrastructure. Um, you know, I'm sure you know more than others right now how how impactful that is. Um, and I think those kinds of things, along with the fact that we have a university right here in Davis, I think there's things that you'll, I'm sure, will come uh, to the forefront as you, as you work through what your agenda is going to be in the next few years. Well, I appreciate you bringing up the earthquake because that's been something that's been heavily on our minds. We've been really working overtime, and you know, our congressman here, I know uh, Congressman Garamendi is your congressman there, but over here on this side, it's Thompson and 
Senator Boxer and Senator Feinstein have, uh, you know, both been here. And we finally got individual assistance for our low-income, you know, people that, you know, have had houses fall off the foundation, that have had, you know, fireplaces and chimneys uh, collapse. And, you know, these people are living paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, it was something that really took a long time to get, so we're really pleased that they're going to get the assistance they need. So that's been something that, uh, you know, we've, we've had that, uh, I've had that experience in floods, I've had that experience in devastating fires, but never in, this, in the earthquake. Um, I think there's some things that we can do to shore up our, uh, you know, the service that we can provide citizens in that area. Well, you know, leadership is defined by crisis a lot of times, Bill, and you've shown a lot of it here in this uh, in the response to the earthquake, and I, I know of your work in the flood control, so we appreciate all that. Let's hope we don't have uh, the major crisis going forward, but uh, just as one Davis resident, uh, I, I will thank you for uh, whatever you would do in the future if that should happen, because I know you'll be right out front and, and doing the good work. We're going to let you go, Bill. We know you got a lot of other people to talk to and places to be. Uh, for the people of Davis and the Yolo County folks watching us, we want to... Uh, Congratulate you on what looks like a victory, and uh, uh, look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks a lot. Thanks, well, thanks. so much. I, I want to give a shout out. I'm not going to name, name any names, but there's quite a few people from uh, Davis that came over here for this uh, uh, victory celebration, and it's very much appreciated. Thank you. That's great. Both very, very much. Yeah, great. you you do realize, Bill, that they came over there because you're in Napa. And there were some <laughs> other reasons that they might have wanted to have go there instead of being here tonight with us. But that's okay. Richard, you're going to have your time too, okay? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, we I'm, like wine. We'll, Anna and I like wine. We'll, we'll, we'll put you on All right, well, calendar. I look forward to seeing both of you over here. All Take right. Care. Thanks a lot, Thanks, Bill. Thanks, <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, yeah, um, that's, uh, yeah, you wonder yeah, why everybody, that's where they all support are. Right. them in Napa. Fine. Okay. Is it top of the hour? It's top of the it hour. So I get to tell you again, thank you for tuning uh, in. Uh, DC TV channel 15 on the Comcast system. You are watching live coverage of the November 4th, 2014 election. This program is simulcast live on KDRT, affectionately known as KDRT. KDRT. 95.7 FM in Davis. KDRT. Um, the number to call if you have a question is 757-2419, and we haven't gotten any calls yet, but uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, the Davis Media Access's Twitter feed, we're into Twitter now, is uh, DMA feed, uh, at DMA feed, one is somebody, word. Is somebody tweeting all of this out? I, I think it could be. I what think what do I know? Were, my, I they, think they were. They tweeting. made me turn off my phone. So they were I tweeting. Have, I have no idea. And Davis Media Access, if you didn't know, also has a Facebook page. So if you are interested in hearing more about what's going on here, this wonderful community treasure, please uh, like them on Facebook. There you go. And don't forget to contribute. Don't that forget. was the Ana Ferreira. There you go. Don't forget to contribute. Don't forget we to We have another guest contribute. in our studio today, and uh, another school board candidate, candidate, one of thousands. Welcome. Mr. Tom Adams. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you tonight? We're doing good. We're having a lot of fun. It's, um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, it's, it's community television. We're doing what we can do. Yeah. Hey, it looks like you're in third place, or it was the last time we checked. I don't know if... Anything's changed? Have you seen anything different out there? Uh, no, not since the initial results, but okay. I feel pretty good about that. All right. I just feel I need my own Madison Bumgarner to come and close down the show for there me. There you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right, that <laughs> is? Go Giants. You, you don't have any Mad Bum underwear that you're going to throw out like Jimmy Fallon or what something, right? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, I, I'm, I don't have that type of campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Adams, mad bum. Never mind. <laughs> These Tom, two are, can you throw a rock and, and hit his house? Or? Uh, my dog uh, breaks through the fence into his yard yeah, periodically. Yeah, so. And we finally figured out why, and it's because another neighbor's cat right. hangs out in his yard during right. the day when we're all gone, which is why my dog's trying to get over there. Yeah. I don't know. 
that's what he says, I don't know. Yeah, so. but I'm also the canine friendly candidate. There that, you go. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I mean, I, I saw that you were walking at the dog park, mm -hmm. handing out uh, flyers and mm -hmm. to dogs. I don't know. I hope that it was usually out. on the trails. You know. The, well, the tell trails. us about yeah. the campaign. What did you enjoy did you most about it? Uh, I think what is amazing about the Davis campaign is just how engaged the electric electorate is. You know, when you go out there and meet people, they actually know the issues. Um, and all sorts of ways. And so it really required you to be on your toes and really read a lot um, to understand the issues, to listen, to have a lot of background. Even though my, my field is education, um, studying Davis was just a, just a rich growing experience for me just because uh, the schools are great, the teachers are great, uh, there's good leaders, but also amazingly, Davis parents really know about education. It's it's interesting because, you know, I think there's a wide range of issues. We were just talking about sleep deprivation and, you know, looking at the schedules and, you know, it, it's very interesting, but I think you're right. I mean, I think depending on where your child is and what you know about um, diff your different interests, you can hear mm -hmm. quite a bit from from our parents. Yeah. I, um, I I know you have a background with the Department of Ed, right? And so you come um, every. It, like I've been saying this to every one of the candidates. Everyone's got a a, a different skill set and some very unique um, strengths. And right. I I see that you've you know been working with the Department of Education on Common Core and other areas curriculum, mm -hmm. um, which is near and dear to um, many of our parents. Right. Um, do you, did you find that that made it easier for you or were there issues that you learned about um, on the campaign that, that you hadn't really thought about before um, or, that, or that you learned more about as you, as you talked with people? So the interesting thing about Davis for me is that I was expecting a lot of just, um, controversy over Common Core. If you look through um, other school board elections throughout the country. It's a hot issue, it's mm -hmm. a divisive issue, but it really wasn't there. What people wanted from me was more background on, you know, how do, how do the math standards really work and how does it compare, say, with the previous math standards we had before? Or how does, you know, what's the real change in language arts? And are Davis schools, you know, from my opinion, prepared for the change? Um, and so it was very thoughtful discussions. It was, and I think this is uh, remarkable again about Davis is, you know, there is a basic consensus here about good education and that when people look at the issues, they actually study it. They don't listen to the sound bites. They actually go to the documents themselves. They um, want to hear informed opinions about things. Yeah. And so, you know, that made uh, my campaign a lot easier and just in terms of I, I was expecting some contentious uh, points mm -hmm. on it but it was actually more of a sharing of ideas and exchange about okay so how do we move forward in the best way mm -hmm. so that's what I really liked about it I think you know that was a I call that a very pleasant surprise yeah what oh, go ahead no go ahead I, I'm just I, I know you, Tom, obviously we made a joke about that mm -hmm. and all, and, and when I was on the board you were very helpful to me in terms of just trying to talk through issues, what, mm -hmm. what do parents think. You have children, or you have a child that was actually going to school on the other side of town, mm -hmm. right. which always gave a whole other perspective too, because this town does have perspectives based on geography in some way, and, and right. of course the magnet schools and, and you know immersion and all that. But what was the one thing that you you know, you woke up one morning and said, this is why I'm going to run. What, was there one thing and what was it that really you, made you want to do this? Well, this is, if, in terms of where I am in my career and my knowledge and where the district is in terms of its needs, it, for me, it was the perfect intersection. Um, I have been, you know, leading a lot of efforts on Common Core implementation and now we're just starting the implementing the new science standards called the Next Generation Science Standards. And the district is about to begin that and has already started that. 
And I've seen some good work already being done by you know, uh, district uh, leaders. And I thought, you know, if I don't run now, when? Mm -hmm. And it comes down to that famous scene in Harry Potter where Dumbledore says to Harry, you know, you can either do the right thing or the easy thing. <laughs> and I decided to do the right thing. <laughs> Dumbledore was played by um, a guy named Richard Harris. I just yeah. thought I'd point that out to you all. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm not oh, making yeah. that up on it. So, Poor guy passed away, though. So yeah. let's don't go there. Yeah, let's okay. not go there. Right, yeah, Definitely. We need you, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, that's a great so, answer, though. That's, 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 a great, that's just a great answer. It is a great though. answer. It's about, and, and true, but, you know. And so this nexus brought you here, if not now, when? And so, you know, I, we do so much appreciate your willingness to serve. I, I see, you know, people talking about curriculum and, you know, class size reduction and other things that school boards may or may not be responsible for actually making any further changes to. But implementation is also a very important part of what you do, and that, um, and so, and also, you know, there's other things we were talking about. Um, um, you know, their school districts are often biggest employers in areas. Um, you know, do you see other areas besides curriculum that you're interested in? Like, I, I always think about facilities with Davis right now when I was reading on the newspaper about people talking about high school, you know, uh -huh. whether or not it should be three year or four year. And then yeah. uh, at the very end it said, well, you know, it's, it would probably cost uh, right. you know, a, a ton of money to, to make sure that we had the facilities that went along with that. I'm not sure everyone always thinks about those things, but are there other issues? Is it facilities or other things that you're interested in um, that, that you see need doing in the next few years? Well, I think, I think job one is to, one, um, make sure everyone's very comfortable with the current board mix. Uh, we're going to have a uh, parcel tax up in two years, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure everyone has confidence in the school district from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and I think really that's going to be incumbent upon this this next board to reach out to the community to make sure its its decision making is rooted in the concerns uh, of everyone that all voices are heard. I think the other important thing, though, is my. There's a couple issues I really want to work on. One, I really would like to see us work more on you know, some of the work we've done well in terms of, say, solar energy. So why, why haven't we expanded that to other? Who came up with that? Yeah, okay. yeah. Whose idea was that? I don't That's know. You know it's just idea. part of the osmosis. Yeah, now, yeah. exactly. Um, but also you know, maybe helping um, creating uh, more extensive help in terms of volunteerism. I know there's a lot of people who want to volunteer for the schools, mm -hmm. but they don't know how. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can create a process where people can apply for that, and then teachers can actually decide who they want in their classroom. I think well, and especially in communities that may not be represented right. so much in, in the volunteer right. arena, right. reaching out to those folks, too, I think is probably important. You're right, because I mean, there's, this is, again, one thing that's truly wonderful about Davis is that a lot of people want to help the schools. And even when they don't have kids in the schools, they want to volunteer. And we got to harness that energy in, a, in an easy manner so it doesn't, uh, someone can actually go online and say, here are my skill sets, this is what I want to do. We can do a quick background check on them and then have them, uh, you know, find the teacher that they can help. Uh -huh. That's, that's good. That's good. Sounds like we've got to do some wrapping up here. Okay. Um, we're just going to keep moving. What was Mike Nolan's uh, uh, quote earlier about the school district being like a river? river. Like a river. Yeah. The show's that's like, like a show. river. We're, we're like just a river. Moving them in and out. <laughs> we want to, um, thank you for really? uh, putting yourself out there. Congratulations so far on the uh, on where it stands on the absentees. Guess we'll see. Yeah. And uh, I think you've also been a very calming presence in in all of this. I think you know we've been through a lot with um, you know as a as a community. I think it's been you, your message is, is well taken. Oh well, thank you. Sure. And can I say one thing just to yes. thank my lovely wife Jan and my 
beautiful yes. daughter, Michiko. They were so great throughout this whole process. It really is demanding on families, and they were very supportive throughout the whole time. And your mother-in-law. My mother-in-law. What a gem. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thanks it a lot. It is a family Tom. affair. Thank you. Yeah, Thank right. you. Okay. Well, Anna, what are we going to get on to next? I don't know, like a river. Huh? Like, like a river. Well, no, we've got a few, uh, few more um, uh, candidates coming through, or at least one more. We have but the wrap-up. The wrap, but the one thing I wanted to mention is Autumn is actually tweeting. So the question yes. was, who's tweeting? Autumn's tweeting. Autumn is tweeting. So you, you, you gotta can love go that. to DMA's Twitter feed, which is at DMA feed, um, one word, and get live results or live Whatever thoughts she's putting out there. That Autumn she, is is going to put out there. Probably tweeting that my tie didn't match my shirt. And, Who knows? And what is Autumn's last name? You can read it right there. Labe Renault. That's exactly right. And I she is our that. fearless leader here at uh, DMA Executive Producer, and uh, we're happy to have her doing that. I know it's a lot of work to put this show on, and then to be tweeting while all of it is happening is, is and, beyond the pale. And then to be standing back there yelling at those idiots that are on the couch that can't keep everything together. I yeah, mean, I really, know. I know. Really. I know. You think they might have state propositions for us? That'd be kind of cool to look at. County results, what do we have? About 24%, huh? Uh, and this is number, number one. one. Ah, number one, still winning by a lot. And this is not just our county, this is all counties. So that's that's a good deal there. One and two, both winning handily, it looks like. Two is that rainy day fund uh, uh, bu uh, budget balancing type uh, proposition. Number of uh, proposition 45, giving all the power to that one politician, looks like uh, uh, it's, not going, um, it's not going well for the insurance commissioner but that one will probably get a lot closer. The same on 46, it's going down to uh, the doctor drug testing, the medical negligence. The one that raised the cap? It's the micro cap, it's the lawyer's On uh, negligent uh, lawsuits, right? Yeah, all right, uh, criminal sentences, and that one looks like it's uh, passing, or uh, leading, I should say, maybe not as in passed yet. And uh, that's 47. And Prop 48, the Indian gaming, uh, one, uh, one group of gamers is winning over the other group of gamers as that uh, 48 looks like it's going down in flames. Um, and I think that's all the propositions that we have. Maybe we can show the school board numbers one more time. Uh, nothing's really changed as far as I can see. Do you see anything different? Nope. We've got... Uh, Madhavi number one and followed by Barbara Archer and then Tom Adams, Bob Papangay, uh, Jose Granda, Mike and Nolan Mike and Nolan, Chuck Rarity. See, Rarden. for you at home, you don't know that Anna and I both have a little <laughs> bit of uh, sight challenges. And this is We're always like being at Dr. Schrader's <laughs> office, looking at it You're and going. seeing if you can see with this eye or that one. <laughs> I don't know. But I'll, say, I'll tell you one thing that's even stranger is that we have not one but two school board members in our studio right now. They magically and appear they didn't even through television. have to campaign. Susan Levenberg <laughs> and Sheila Allen. Isn't that something? And Susan will still be on the school board. Uh, win, lose, or draw the knife for anybody else. <laughs> you don't get off yet. Your sentence continues. <laughs> and Sheila, uh, you're I'm out of here. here. You're out of here. <laughs> You're already out of here. Not quite she yet. No. I have weeks. I have, yeah. a, I have a couple weeks yet. You do. Too. And uh, before we get started on any of that, I would just thank you on a personal level for your service and all the time that we spend together and everything. Yeah. And if I start crying, uh, Anna <laughs> will then just pick up. Just, uh, where's the I box would come over and give you a hug. It's but okay. I'm, I'm here for I'm your I'm chained to my <laughs> microphone box back here with duct okay. tape. You wonder why I'm sitting up straight? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't Like move. your posture's improved, Richard. Well, it's the duct tape, okay? So that's just how it is. But I really do appreciate do. everything Absolutely. that you've done. Yeah, the community. You've been on the school board for nine years. Nine years, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh -huh. My kids were in 
elementary school when I started, and now there are two in college and one a senior in high school. So congratulations! Yeah, I know. And you're still we're, married. I'm still married. Same <laughs> guy. <laughs> Wow. Mitch. Hi, Mitch. He said, yeah. he said for the first time he would watch. <laughs> yeah, Mitch is finally watching. Yeah, that's why I said years, that. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's well, great. One of the things we were talking to the candidates about, they're such a stellar group. I mean, I, you know, it's just a wonderful thing to see um, the variety of talent and skill sets that they're bringing. Um, but, you know, you know that that there's the campaign and then there's what you actually do. We got into a little bit of that discussion with Alan Fernandez about um, some of the things that, you know, consensus building and why that talent is very important. What, share with us a little bit about um, kind of what, what you see as the real strengths in a school board member um, as they move forward, you know, the kinds of things that they should be aware of going in. You want me to start? You may. <laughs> Go either, ahead. Either and both. Yeah. 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 Please. Both, yes. Yeah. Well, I'll give you my perspective, and then yeah. Sheila will give you sort of the closer. Mm -hmm. um, what I, you know, campaigns really force you into having an individual voice expressing what it is that you want to make happen. People are looking for mm -hmm. leadership and yes. vision, which are important qualities. But when you get on a board and you're one of five, I think it's often a little bit of a surprise that, you know, that leadership and vision has to be melded and merged with, um, with four other perspectives on the board. And so that's where the ability, not just to be able to articulate a vision and know what you want to achieve, but be able to listen to other people and, and try and really develop a shared vision for the district is really important. And so I don't think campaigns prepare you for governing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> and so there's, well especially there's this kind of governing, right? <laughs> yeah. So there's going to be a, um, you know, a, a, a transition phase for all of the new board members. And I think that it's, um, it's, it's a good thing that we have a number of new board members together. And I'm really looking forward to taking some time to really, um, you know, do some retreats, do some opportunity to really um, meld as a board so that we've got a sense of who we are and what, where we want to go together. Yeah. Well said. Well, and you're going to be the continuity, right? Yeah. So that'll well, be. yeah, and I. But Alan has been there mm -hmm. for three months, which right. has given him a little bit of a <laughs> yeah. head know, start. He's, yeah. yeah, he's yeah. got a sense. It's I think, a little bit of an going. inside joke here, but for you to say that now you get to do a lot of retreats, okay? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I know. It's like so I tried not Tim Taylor was Richard. rolling over. Tim was rolling over in his right. That's right. No. Richard and Tim were like retreats. <laughs> okay. No, we were okay with retreats. Yes. No, we weren't. What do you think about it? Well, I'd just like to expand on what you what you started with about the difference between a campaign and governing. And um, I was reading some of the statements from some of the board members, and I and I thought, ha! <laughs> <laughs> And I pulled, pulled I my, my like, very first campaign. Yeah. I was like, yeah, and this is what needs to be done, and this is what I'm going to do. And that's not really how it is. Right, right, right. Well, so it's really about um, building, getting the right people at the table and making sure that not only the people that sit up on the dais agree with you or at least two of them if, so that you can get something passed. But it's really about being a community leader and a community listener. So you have, they're really the bosses, is the community. And then if we make a decision to be able to uh, articulate that to not only the superintendent that we directly work with, but his staff, but then all the way through the, the teachers and the playground people and everyone. That's always been my worry is while we could have a really great discussion and say, and, and all in favor say aye, and then what? So making sure that what we're working towards is something that the community also is interested in, that the staff can be, be on board with, and that we can all move together. So it's even more of building a team than, than just the five people that are sitting up on the dais. But it's the, yeah, really a, a community. What are you most proud of in your, now that you're on the way out, oh, yeah. yeah. What, Nine what years you, is a long time. And though. it doesn't All have to just be one. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, there's, that's well, there's a couple things. It's, it's the fact that really, I, mean, I used to joke about it, but we, we as a, not just we as a governing team, but we as a whole district and community kept the district together through one of the worst mm -hmm. financial times. When we, when Gina, Tim, and I ran 
well, 10 years ago, because we started running before the actual election, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. None. Zero. Mm -hmm. And for us to all come together and really main, most, for the most part, maintain most of the programs. And, you know, there were some things that had to give, and it was really, really difficult uh, that we were able to, as a community, to move through that and come out the other side mostly whole and in some ways better. I'm, I'm very proud of that to be part. It was difficult, mm -hmm. but I'm very proud to have been a part of that. And Richard was a big part of that, too. So yeah, just a, yeah you were part of that. You were in a, that. A sense of just, you know, even as things were felt like they were going to hell in a handbasket, I think the community really rallied. Um, and it was, it was well, it, inspiring to be part of that. Well, if you think about it, too, you and I got on in November of 2007 and took office in December of... And, and then, then all it would hell, hell it all again. Yeah. <laughs> and I've always Not blamed you for the financial, <laughs> you know, the, What's your fault, <laughs> the economic crisis. The economic crisis <laughs> uh, was Susan Loverberg's <laughs> fault. <which laughs> all, I single-handedly kept us out. Now you know it really. You think about it, and you say you had no clue when you ran then that that was because things weren't really that bad when you guys first well, ran. There were a some couple years. major oh, financial issues when we first came that in. There were issues. With the district, yes, right. that's but right. Not but there the weren't whole, the overall, right. and uh, the state I think that uh, I mean, we never saw that train coming, and mm -hmm. there's no way we would be where we are if it wasn't for the yeah. community. Yeah. I mean, I always just felt like we're just up there making decisions, but like you said, it was everybody there, and then everybody stepped up on these parcel taxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we had not passed parcel taxes through those years, you five would five parcel taxes. Think of that, five yeah. years, and you that's one of the on my list of things that I was I either was the chair or yeah. helped to run. And all five of them. That's something mm -hmm. that I'm, you know, well, and sometimes I get just a little cranky, like, okay, okay, you, Mr. Making mean, me, making, saying mean things, well, you were having dinner with your family. I was out making phone calls and, and running a parcel tax because it was that important that we, that it had to be done. And we I did, felt very did, strong yeah. about it. Did what we had to do, and the community mm -hmm. stepped up. It's pretty amazing. And place the Davis to Schools Foundation. I mean, it was just yeah, all those things part. rose up uh -huh. during that time. Yes, mm -hmm. yep. yeah. all, the, all the parts together. Yeah, yeah, and then to, to you know be able to build that beautiful stadium, our largest classroom, mm -hmm. during the time, and we had MLK built during my time. It was. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a there was a lot of good I'm, things. I'm proud of it. And a, few, a few solar panels. That a few might be solar. I think money. of you every time that I park underneath. And them. we hope that in the future that the district will have some facility money to be able to buy out the contract and own those things outright and mm -hmm. have even more savings and maybe build build some more, yeah. do some more. Yeah. Well, know. there's some really interesting facilities things coming up right, right now. We're sort of in the middle. In the property. We talked to Alan a little bit about that, Susan, just mm -hmm. about you know what is going to be facing us. So obviously, we've got to talk about facilities and a parcel tax all at the same time. Talk talk mm -hmm. about a, um, a community conversation. Yeah. No, and, it's uh, true. It's yeah. true. I mean, as we were running parcel taxes to hold together the program. Um, our facilities were going wanting, and so the state really is not interested in stepping up and right. providing even matching funds at this point for facilities. So it's really going to be a community responsibility. And they're looking to the locals to do right. that. So right. I mean, I'm sure you know throughout the state there'll be a a statewide discussion about that. But yes, I mean, we've been good about that. I think our parents know. What, what the situation is, and we'll see yeah. what they do in the future. So school board yeah. into the future, we'll yeah. see. Yeah. We have, uh, we're getting the high sign about wrapping up. No, I just want to give you both, I want to give you both the opportunity <laughs> we're gonna stay. To, we're taking over to say show. some final <laughs> words about, um, about you know, what you see for the future and, and uh, your own experiences. Well, I'll start because I think you should you okay. should have the final okay. word. But um, you know, I've really enjoyed my. So I've only been on the school board for seven years, but um, <laughs> I really it's it's felt like a while. <laughs> <laughs> and I've enjoyed all of the relationships that I've had with the school board. And so there's a sense of um, loss with some good friends who are moving on. Um, but I'm also excited about the opportunity for some new people who are coming on board who really seem to to be bringing some fresh perspective and some new energy to the school board. And I'm excited to be there for the next two years and um, help that group move forward. Mm -hmm. 
And when um, Gina, Tim, and I came on together uh, nine years ago, there was a, lo a lot of concern that it was three new people, the majority of the board were gonna be brand new, and I think we did just fine. And I think that this new group will do just fine. I'm really excited about the mixture of personalities and experiences, and they'll do great. Well, and you're not going anywhere, right? They're going to be able to. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> talk with, talk <laughs> with you about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hotline. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. We, we have well, to we wrap appreciate it up. you coming and the time that you've given to the community already. We really do. Thank Absolutely, you. Michael. All right. Thank you. Well, Anna, it's been a lot of fun. I uh, guess w that means we're. That means it's time stop for us talking. to. Yeah, they yeah. want us. They all want to go home. We're gonna be here when the lights go out. All right. I, I think we should just keep going to your little <laughs> computer, and we'll just. Do, they, they want we'll to keep leave. going. The lights will be over. There are no updates, and I think we still have to do one is. last. Do we do one I last? I want to. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in uh, to DCTV Channel 15 on the Comcast system. It was live coverage tonight of the November 4th election. It was simulcast on KDIRT. Uh, I want to give out a shout out to our partners, the city government, uh, Channel 16, Davis Community Network, Omsoft Technologies, Yolo County's elections officer office. You can see on your screen all of the folks behind the scenes that have been working all night. And uh, we really want to appreciate uh, their effort. And uh, I guess really that is about all we can say. But Thank consider you. supporting all of us.